Hey guys, Jay, welcome back to the channel. So guys, man, we just, I, I swear to God, we just talked about indie projects last night, didn't we? We did indeed, but you know what? It, it's just a, 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 a hot topic right now. I mean, we have multiple different companies talking about, you know, getting into crowdsource. I mean, Hasbro's already doing it, raising billions, millions of dollars for their projects to get, you know, the ghost, which uh, only has a, a few days left. If you guys are looking to back that project, we still haven't unlocked uh, Kanan. Uh, Jairus, we still have not unlocked him, and we still have Zeb left to go. So yeah, guys, only five days, getting closer to four days left to back the Ghost. Uh, and it's looking pretty close, but I think I, I still am pretty confident that every single tier will be unlocked. Uh, I'm pretty sure about that. And don't forget, if they actually unlock all tiers, they will give us, get this guys, they will give us the ability to order Sabine Ren and Chopper. Can you believe that, guys? <laughs> They're going to give us the ability to buy these things. There are a lot of people online right now talking about how that should have been included in the entire campaign. As a matter of fact, some people are advocating that those characters should have been included as bonus characters every single time we unlock uh, one of the figures, which I think might be a bit stretch. You know, that might that might be a bit of a stretch, in my opinion. That's, 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 that's kind of rough. Uh, and of course, hot on the heels of that crowdsource project, we have the Cat's Lair. This thing, this thing is an absolute beast. If you guys saw my video on the Cat's Lair at PowerCon, I swear to God, this thing, whatever you're thinking this thing is, whatever you're thinking, if you think that it's the size of Snake Mountain over here, you're wrong. I was wrong. I was absolutely blown away because this thing, this thing, not only is it bigger than Snake Mountain, the Cat's Lair head is bigger than my head. It's bigger than everybody. It's huge. If you haven't watched that already, definitely go and watch the video where I actually take a look at it. They do it with full 360. I talked to Brian Flynn of Super 7 about the Canadian connection and how those details are coming soon. As a matter of fact, we already have a Canadian distributor. It's absolutely crazy. So that Kickstarter will probably end in another 15 days, probably even less now. So guys, be sure to put down your pledge for the Cat's Lair from Thundercats. You guys aren't going to regret that. But today, I'm super excited to uh, to be talking more about the indie scene. Last night, we had a very a couple of very special guests. We had uh, Brick from uh, Brick Something, and of course, Adam from Highly Articulated. We also had um, Jason from Spiro Toys talking all about how their experiences were uh, with Kickstarters. Of course, uh, Brick Something and Adam didn't really have anything to do with that, but. Jason really did relate how difficult it was, the fact that his first project actually failed. So he's actually been on the on, on the on the um in you know independent uh, crowdsource uh, project for quite some time. That one didn't pan out from the first time, but he bounced back. And as we know, his last project really did hit a home run. And now AWOC, Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, and Spiro Toys is a pretty big deal in terms of like the indie toy scene. So we know that this can work, but the the subject of whether or not big, uh, you know, companies like Hasbro and Mattel, because Mattel is now on Tuesday, Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, Mattel is actually giving us, the fans, the ability to choose the next crowdsource project for Mattel Creations. That's crazy. So, you know, uh, we already have Eternia, which was fully funded and uh, was only one, one, uh, well, sorry, a few hundred backers away from unlocking the final stretch goal. It really got close, right? And that was a huge success. But since then, Mattel's track record has been pretty low. They have actually are they're actually 0 for 3 right now in terms of their uh their 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 crowdsource projects. The latest of which was the um Jurassic Park Gates, which did not fund. It didn't even get close. Prior to that was the WWE Nitro entrance stage. That was again a, a bit of a really big hit and miss. Uh and then even at the end, they were they were rearranging their uh stretch goals just to try and get it to work for as many people as possible. It just did not seem to pan out. It's unfortunate. But this always this also brings up the question, is crowdsourcing something for billion-dollar companies? And, you know, that question is going to continue to come up. But tonight's discussion, tonight's discussion is, of course, about what Kickstarter was really meant for. Why was Kickstarter even created? Why was Indiegogo created? Why were any of these crowdsourced platforms actually made for? Well, I got to tell you, they're made for the independent artists. They're made for people who are, uh, you know, having trouble getting their project, their 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 dream, right, actually funded so that they can get these wonderful projects off the ground. Comic books, right, toys, 
video games, that's actually what the, the original intent for a crowdsource project was. And there are a couple of creators who I want to highlight tonight, uh, you know, who are trying to get their projects off the ground. So I wanted to bring in some very, very special guests tonight. Guys, um, I've known these two for a, for a long time. Like we've been... <laughs> We've been doing the, the the comic book scene. We've been doing the independent scene for quite some time. And finally, uh, they've decided to, to jump headlong into the indie scene. I want you guys to uh, give a warm welcome to my friends from Comics Asylum. Guys, uh, first I want to introduce a, a wonderful graphic designer, uh, someone who, of course, uh, I'm a graphic designer. We've, we've been in the trenches together. So, guys, please help me welcome Vaughn Joseph uh, from Comics Asylum. What's going on, Vaughn? You're on mute, so just don't... <laughs> I do that all the time. It's okay. Force a habit. Force a habit. Okay. I'm doing good, man. Doing good. Glad I do that all the time. How's it going, Vaughn? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. Glad to I be want here. to congratulate you once again, guys. If you are in the Hamilton area, Vaughn has officially opened up massive creative in, at the at the, in, in the Vaughn. I'm sorry, in the um ah, in the Hamilton village. area. Sorry, yeah. Vaughn. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> us, before we get started, tell us a little bit about uh, Massive. Like, uh, how, like what's what's going on with Massive right now? So Massive was uh, I was doing uh, like you know I've been doing this for a while, and I moved to Hamilton in 2017, I think, and I wanted to kind of establish something that was a little bit uh, sorry about that, sorry. a little bit uh, more established and set down like core roots where somebody could come and talk to a graphic designer without having to work <laughs> worry about any issues. Um, so. Um, I set that up for a while. We had we we're working out of a co-working space, but we've had the opportunity now. I got a store, a physical storefront, and set it all up and painted it and all kinds of stuff, so people would actually could walk in ground level and talk to a graphic designer. Because the classic situation that we always hear is, um, I don't know where my web designer is. My man just vanished, right? So or I can't get a hold of my graphic design guy. So the whole idea around this is to kind of alleviate that, so it's a little more grass level. People could talk to somebody. When they have an issue, if they need to come pick up their prints and stuff like that, or whatever the physical thing that we've created for them, they know where we are 100% of the time, right? Everything's in-house, local, supported, and everything, right? Absolutely. And uh, once again, they are. What, what's the address for uh, for the? So it's three nineteen uh, King Street East, Hamilton, Ontario, right? Right down in International Village, in the heart of Hamilton. And, or if you live in the Hamilton area and you need the services of a graphic designer or web design, definitely check out Massive uh, on King Street East. You guys aren't going to regret it. I personally recommend them for sure. 100%. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. Absolutely. No worries. Uh, I want to bring in the second half of the creative team here uh, for their for their project. We've known this guy for such a long time. Steve, what's going on, brother? How you doing? Hey, hey. how's everybody? <laughs> long time, brother. Like it's, it's good to see you guys again. You know, and and you know what's so exciting for this brand new this brand new project. Um, so Steve, how, how have you been? What have you been working on? Like, uh, you know, you're, you're always, you're still teaching, like everything, everything's good or like, no, uh, actually I've retired. I retired okay. from teaching. So that, that door's closed and now I'm fully into, uh, comics and writing and, and working in film as well. Too, so excellent. It's been, it's been wow. a good change. That's, 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 that's incredible. Oh my goodness. That's just, that's just amazing. And it must be so liberating right now, you know, being able to do what you want instead of doing what you have to. Um, but you know, retirement is good, especially, you know, in the, uh, in the education sector, you know, they take care of you. So I'm glad, I'm glad that you're, uh, you know, now settled and everything like that. Um, other than this particular project, what have you been working on? Like anything right in writing and, and things like that? Or uh, So I'm working on my own, uh, I guess, five issue miniseries for uh, a comic book called Chronicari Alpha. I published the novella of it back in, I think, 2014. Nice. So I've got about 100 of the 110 pages drawn, um, continuing to work on Atrium. And then I've been doing some storyboard work. I did some stunt work in some films um, and did some storyboarding for films as well, too. So uh, along with that and doing some writing, uh, it's been a pretty full slate. OK, Steve, did I just hear you did stunt work in films? Am I, am I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, brother, we're not getting any younger, man. Like, are you serious? You're, you're reeking. <laughs> Let's just say I, I stumbled into it. Let's just say that. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I'm not going to be like jumping off any bridges on fire or anything oh, like that. But no, uh, no. but it's been fun. And, and the whole thing about being in those those kind of situations is it actually helps inform my storytelling when I'm doing um, comics and, and writing scripts. So it's been a, it's been quite educational as well as a lot of fun. All right, protect those fingers, brother. Like seriously, I don't, I don't Absolutely. want you losing the uh, the ability to create. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna have to dictate from now on. That would be that would be absolutely horrid. Uh, yeah. I want to bring in one more special guest uh, to help on this panel because uh, this is a huge. The independent scene is so varied and so vast. But you know what? 
independent creators need this type of boost. And I really wanted to bring in somebody who's been in the trenches, who's actually had a several books uh, published through this uh, through this method. I want to bring in my very good friend, uh, Gilly Reds Comics. Gilly, what's going on, my brother? How are you doing tonight? Guys, what's going on? Mega J, thank you so much for having me. Uh, pretty cool to just be on a stream with like-minded individuals and uh, just talk about some comics and uh, the struggle of the independent scene, but we keep on rocking and rolling. That's what we do. Absolutely, my friend. Uh, how are things going with you? Uh, you know, the family's good. You know, the uh, the books are... The, your we'll talk a little bit more about everyone's Kickstarter, but how, how's how's everything going with you? So far, so good. I've uh, My family's good. I'm a underground creative writer. I've been in the comic book game, I want to say almost 10 years. My first Kickstarter was in 2014 called Under the Flesh. And it's been a learning experience ever since. The big dream for me is to get published by the big two, Marvel and DC. Uh, that doesn't happen yet, but you know what? I keep on going on. This was one of my favorite titles right here, Galactic Rodents of Mayhem. We did that. Uh, we were able. You want to bring it back up, uh, Gilly? Oh, yeah, yeah. Galactic Rodents of Mayhem. If you grew up in the Saturday morning cartoon era of the 80s and 90s, you'll feel right at home with this. And uh, if you got some TMNT vibes from there, we definitely have our own <laughs> TMNT homage <laughs> cover. Uh, so, yeah, I've just been writing. I've, I've covered everything from horror from sci-fi action, Lovecrafty and stuff. I haven't jumped into the superhero game yet, but I am working on a top secret project that I'm about almost 18 pages in. So I'm always moving and shaking. Awesome. Awesome. Just before we get started, I want to say hi to everybody who's in the chat, guys. Thank you for being here for uh, for us tonight. This has been, uh, I know this is my usual time, but you know what? It's always great to see you guys here. Andrew Davis is in the house. What's going on, my friend? What are we talking about today? We're talking about comics, my friend. We're talking about independent projects. Uh, you know, we are talking about toys, but we are going to be talking about comics uh, a lot today. So I hope you're interested. I hope you enjoy that. Uh, Fran Capitan, America. What's going on, my friend? Hello, hello. Rhea Black. Always good to see you, Rhea. Thank you for being here tonight. Justin Mohan. Uh, is this topic uh, asking if Kickstarter was made for the indie arts project? I, this is this is this is just an overall arcing idea of what was was Kickstarter and Indiegogo really made for. Of course, the answer is actually independent projects like these. So thank you, thank you for being here, Justin. Uh, Whitebeard Michael, what's going on, my friend? Nolan, always good to see you. Uh, Kawabunga dude, what's up? How are you going? Uh, Jason Woods, good to see you, my friend. Paul Morales, how are you doing, my my brother? Uh, Frankie Rivera, let's go, let's go, brother. The Mass Figure Collector, all the way from the UK. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Mass Figure Collector. Always good to see you guys. Um, and of course, everyone's going to keep rolling in as the as the time goes on. My usual time is about an hour, is about two hours from now, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna keep rolling because uh, it is the long weekend, everybody. At least here in Canada, Gilly, it's a long weekend in America, isn't it? Yes, sir. It <laughs> is okay. So everybody's just chilling. We're doing our thing. Uh, the first the first uh, book that I wanted to introduce is something very exciting. And you know what? Uh, it's been a while since I've seen something that, uh, like this. Uh, I think there have been other projects, but this one in particular really has caught my eye, and I wanted to uh, to highlight that today. Uh, the brand new project uh, from Asylum Comics uh, is Atrium. Uh, guys, why don't you tell us a little bit about Atrium? All right, go ahead, Steve. All right, so Atrium is a five-issue miniseries. Uh, it centers on two paramedics, uh, Darnell and Naomi, who are tasked with uh, delivering a donor heart uh, to a very important patient. Uh, so because of the nature of the mission, they're accompanied by a strike, te uh, by a strike team that is uh, tasked with protecting them. And then there are a group of assassins that want the heart to not be delivered. So it's up to them to get it to the patient in time. But unfortunately, they're intercepted and have to then go into the subway systems. And then when the train gets derailed, um, they got to find their way out of the tunnels and, and get the heart to the, ho to the hospital before it's too late. Amazing. This is this is absolutely incredible. Um, so now I know both of you, even though as talented as you are, you're not really uh, illustrators, <laughs> either of you. So uh, you're working with a whole bunch of creatives uh, on this one in particular. Uh, did you want to highlight anybody specific for uh, for the team that was working on this? Uh, the visuals are provided by Lucas Falapi. He's out of Brazil. Uh, absolutely love what he's doing. Uh, he's, he's knocked the script out of the park. And then the colors are provided by Nikos Koutsis and uh, Mike Torres, who are out of Greece. And they actually work on Savage Dragon with um, Eric Larson. So uh, they, they were all, you know, really excited about what's been put down on the page. And um, we really couldn't ask for more. It's been fantastic. 
Absolutely. And it's uh, how long have you guys been working on this particular project? Is, is this been in the work? Is this just a recent uh, development, or have you guys been working on this for quite some time? <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> well, it's been a long one, right? In one iteration or another. But this is the newest iteration in the last probably year and a half. Uh, we had something else before, but unfortunately, that fell through. So we kind of had to restart a little bit, just a little bit through the pandemic. And we found Lucas and we kind of re reworked the idea into something that we could uh, move forward at a better pace overall. You know how that's happened sometimes, right? So Absolutely, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, so you're the writer on this one, is, is, is that correct, Steve? Yeah, co-writer. Co-writer, okay. And and your, your other creator? Uh, Peter Van Horn. And he and I usually work together on our scripts and we have a few other ideas that are uh, cooking um, right now. But Atrium's up first and then we'll see what happens after this one. Absolutely. So, um, how did you guys come up with this idea originally? And I know that you know Vaughn, you just said that it's gone through several iterations. But what was the what was the original concept behind Atrium? The original concept hasn't really changed that much. Uh, one of our other co-creators, uh, Gregory Parkin, um, kind of had an idea that was going to be, I guess, a short film. Way... Gregory who? Gregory Gre Parkin. Gregory, another, who? another name from the past. <laughs> <laughs> Gregory who? <laughs> You mean the person who said that he was going to be here and he's not here to talk about his own comic book? Are you talking about that, Gregory Park? <laughs> yes, one of the same. One of the same. Um, I'm just ribbing him, man. We love Greg, sure. but uh, but come on, Greg, where are you, man? <laughs> come on. He'll, he'll, just like every good hero, he'll come in just in time. He will come in to save the day right at the end. Okay, no worries. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had to do that because honestly, we rely on this man to do to be here and he's not here. <laughs> it's all good. It's, it's all, all good. He's got, he's got family. He's got family he's obligations, man. just like the rest of us. You know what I mean? He's doing the right thing. Good on, good on Greg. Absolutely. Uh, so, sorry to interrupt you, Steve. Continue. No worries. Uh, so it's it's been a long gestating um, project. And then we when we figured out what we wanted to do and, and have the story kind of work, uh, then we had trouble finding an artist that would kind of match what we wanted to do. And then just through the years, it just never got to a point where the creatives could kind of come together and agree on a direction for the story. But I think where we are now, it actually is, it's actually stronger for all of the kind of like side roads and bumps and hiccups that we went through creatively. And we've had some really amazing feedback. So we've had some people who are in the film industry, even people that we have shown this book to as um, Vaughn printed up a couple of sample copies. Yeah, we did some sample copies for Fan Expo and just kind of, it was more just to kind of scout out for some uh, cover work for issue two so that they could kind of see what we're producing so they know what they're getting into. And we've had some great feedback from some local artists, um, Mike Ruth, uh, Andy Bellinger, a um, couple decently named guys, right? So we're looking at other opportunities right now, but it's coming along. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I'm always, you know, uh, Trying to trying to find brand new projects, and and I saw the um, I saw the the ash can um, for anybody who doesn't know, <laughs> that's an old term for like a, a small preview book uh, from back in the day. Uh, there's there like I was so excited to see that you guys had already gotten this far in the, as an ash can. Um, now this is going to be your first project under the uh, as far as I know, this is your first project under um, Comics Asylum. Is that correct? Yeah. So we kind of pivoted the Comics Asylum brand that used to be news entertainment and pop culture entertainment, uh, news and coverage, to which, which we already had long time planned, but it was like we finally made the transition. So we're going to be doing publishing, right? So Steve started a little bit earlier with some of his own books, um, but now Comic Asylum is going to be doing intellectual IPs that are kind of self-contained. And we're kind of going to take the model of more the um, the British television kind of where it is. So it's not like never-ending projects. These are kind of isolated projects, one and done, you know what I mean? Or at least chapter based so that there's not, you know, an endless cycle of, you know, next week on, you know, Dragon Ball, right? It's it's uh, six self-contained issues. You get it as a book, that's done. We move on to another property. And if we feel like coming back to something two, three years later that we thought was a good IP that really resonated with people, we could come back, but we don't want to kind of dull it down and it just makes more sense, I feel at least, and we feel at least, is just that self-contained projects right now work better as a as an as an IP so that you can kind of convert them into other properties as well, too. So whether you know a public um 
another TV production company comes along and says, you know what, I like that. I can turn that into uh, a two and a half hour movie or even a self-contained six episode series, right? And that's what we're kind of looking to create is things like that where it becomes really, but also tell good stories because I feel sometimes, a lot of the time, some of these stories are, they go on forever. They kind of dilute the product and you lose the initial vision of what the story was supposed to be. And it's like endless. Like, how old is Spider Man right now? Like, not the how Harper on Marvel, but like, it's it's never ending, right? So, like, there has to be some finality to certain things, I feel like, at least with some stories, right? So, no, that's I, kind I, of how we envision, envision what we're trying to do. You know, I, I hear what you're coming from. I mean, like, the, the Peter, Park, Peter, Peter Parker is, uh, you know, um, virtually. Uh, you know, 35 years old. I think that's the oldest he's ever gotten. He's never actually reached 40. Uh, and now they have the the and now they, the the comic the comic book industry has actually created this new technique called uh, multiversing. So now we can have like you know five year old Spider Mans. You know, we, we we can we can recreate any uh, you know um, uh, superhero at any timeline. You know, and and just reboot the stories over and over again. Um, and you know, I said it multiple times that that's one of the weaknesses of Marvel and DC: the fact that they they use their characters as crutches to continue this, you know, to continue to continually use them over and over and over again. There are no new stories being developed, and it's it's uh it's kind of sad, you know. And and then they they get they get into this hole where they they're turning their 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 heroes into heels. You know what I mean? It, it just it's just this uh, never ending uh problem that they seem that they seem to continue to have. Um, was that a problem you guys found yourselves as well? Like, is that one of the reasons why you don't want to go down that route? Because you know, it seems like you're planning for the future of you know additional IPs and, and things along those lines. To be honest with you, we just want to tell good stories. Um, try to stay away from rebooting, having to reboot things. Uh, I just remember, like, I want to kind of recapture the the kind of excitement that we had as kids uh, running to the store, corner store before you know it was uh, your local comic shop, and picking up a whole bunch of titles and kind of have that kind of cliffhanger uh, feeling at the end of every issue, you couldn't wait till next month, right? Uh, and there wasn't much eye rolling back in the day when something happened. It was, you were either enraged or you were sad for the character, but you were invested in another way as opposed to like, oh, it's another number one, right? Um, it's kind of that kind of storytelling that we want to do and not really kind of have to rely on uh, any kind of sales gimmickry or anything like that. So if you're invested in a character, you're invested in the growth of any character that we're creating. That's that's wonderful. Um, the, the campaign itself is running for how long? So I think we got another two weeks left. Um, and it's going along pretty well. We're getting some good feedback. Uh, I think we're about 35% of the way there. We're very, and so we'll have a pretty big push in the next couple of weeks. Um, to kind of get us over the hump, but I'm confident that it's going to be, there's a lot of interest in terms of like, yeah, we're going to support you. Um, and I, I, this is our first time. So everything for us is kind of like a new step into the mm -hmm. wilderness. Sure. Uh, but so far it's been pretty good. The feedback's been great. Uh, and I, I don't want to speak for Vaughn, but uh, we're having a great time kind of promoting it and interacting with our audience when we, we do a social media post or something like that. Yeah, Vaughn looks... Ron, you're you're on mute. You're you're mute. You're muted. Sorry, force of habit. Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a great experience. I think it's it's an eye-opening experience as well too. You kind of learn stuff as you go along, especially on your first. I would I would I would suppose like you've had the same thing, Gilly, where you kind of see things and you're like now knowing going into our next Kickstarter, I already know some things that I'd probably do different and pre-plan a little bit different, right? But overall, I think it's been a positive experience. And I mean, it's the first step in a long line of steps, right? So I'm all for it. Yeah, we, we really just can't wait to get the book in people's hands. Yeah. And uh, have the public kind of decide, right? Uh, when you're new, you know, everyone's kind of like not quite sure what you're going to get or even what you're about or if you're going to be around 10 minutes later. But uh, I can rest assured anyone who is interested in Atrium We'll be around for a long time. We got a lot of stories to tell, and you're going to enjoy what we have cooked up in these five issues. So it is a five issue uh, miniseries uh, for the initial for the initial run. Uh, yeah. But that is that including for, with this particular Kickstarter? Are they are there going to be five issues for this one, or is it just the first issue, and, and then you're just going to continue afterwards? Uh, we're not quite sure exactly how we're going to kickstart the rest of it. Whether we'll do like a Kickstarter per issue, or maybe do two and three as a Kickstarter, and then four and five as a Kickstarter. Um, we'll determine that based on what kind of feedback we get uh, and when we kind of like 
you know, huddle and, and pre-plan for the next one. But we're definitely going to be doing a, another Kickstarter probably near the end of the year for the next issue. The next issue is already drawn. Uh, it's fully drawn, and we have the third issue thumbed out. So we're ready to go. Excellent. And, uh, you know, Gilly, what are your, do you have any thoughts? Because uh, this is a, a wonderful project. You've been down this road already. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, oh, and, and then I'll, and after Gilly puts in his thoughts, I'm going to ask about the, um, the, the, the different levels of pledges and, and if there are any stretch goals involved. Uh, Gilly, what are, what are, what are your thoughts? Do you... I think just, if you just look at a campaign, sometimes you can just know off the bat uh, about a project. The artwork is is stellar. It's it's pro quality, and a lot of times, as as an independent, um, you kind of want to show that you you kind of know the field. Uh, as you can see, this team here knows comics. They want to recapture that excitement. Um, since back in the day, we all remember that going to the spinner rack, getting the next adventure. Um, and like they said, they're putting something together that serves as a blueprint for a, either a TV show. Um, or a movie. So what they have here just on the premise and just on the artwork alone, it, it, it's, it captures you. Um, they, like they said, they're learning as they go. They're trying to find the audience. They're trying to figure out how they're going to lay out their plans, but they, they have a strategy, which is good. And that's what you got to do. You just got to constantly promote. Um, and they're in like every Kickstarter campaign. I don't care how prominent you are. There's always a dead zone. If you do a campaign for like 30 days and you're kind of like in that two-week window, there's like a dead zone where you feel like there's no movement coming, the stress <laughs> hits you, and it's like it just roll with it, just try to promote. And usually in the last, you know, the last week, is where things start picking up in like the last few days, a couple hours until you start uh, seeing a, a spike. So overall, they they have a solid product, and it's just it's cool, man. I, I love seeing this, and we and. Uh, it's funny you mentioned Spider-Man and you kind of, there's a fatigue um, with a lot of the big two products that, that are going out. And me, as someone that grew up on that, you get to a point where it's like, okay, yeah, this has been done. How many times can you reinvent the Spider-Man story? How many times can you tell a Batman story? Then you start, it, it's almost like a lack of creativity where you're like, okay, we might need a new hero uh, for this generation, or we might need a new this. And it's never that. It's just, retooling like the same structure and it's in the same formula and it's hard because you have a dedicated fan base that's cert that's you know they had they see a, a superhero a certain way and then you kind of like this to reinvent the norm you just throw something that wouldn't make sense so the most important thing is the storytelling which i like and you'll see a lot of that passion and a lot of the indie projects the problem is the risk okay so we don't have the resources of like a big two where we could pump out a book every month or every two months. So sometimes you'll see a project like this and it's a matter of, okay, it'll take certain time to get that book out. Uh, but then at the same time, you got to see the passion behind the storytelling. We just want to create these new stories. And in the age of streaming and everything that's going on, if we could find a little audience here, we could show that, Hey, we're not afraid to take risks. Whereas you already see crowdfunding, you already see the toy industry is using crowdfunding as a safe model. Uh, these big companies, they have the financial resources to get stuff done. Uh, we're the little guys trying to build an audience and cultivate it within this big pond, right? With all these big fish. Uh, so I appreciate the struggle. And when I see stuff like Atrium, it's it's good because if you guys take the time to check the underground, you will find a lot of stuff just out there. But you got to deep dive because it, I'm sure if you go to Kickstarter right now, I don't think Atrium will be a highlighted project. There's algorithms that go into all this stuff too. So just being here, being with Mega Day's channel and listening to the little guys and taking a look at some of this stuff, you see the clockwork, you see how the, the inner workings go with crowdfunding, even on an indie scale. And it's similar to toy scale, to the film scale. It's, there's a lot of similarities. So on that note, um, like pretty much, I've always seen this. I've always seen this uh, happen in many uh, crowdsourced, crowdsourced projects. There's going to be the spike at the beginning. Like, you know, you're going to get all the support from your friends, your family, people who are really interested and invested in comics, you know, because again, Kickstarter gives you that option, that, that little boost right at the beginning. And then there's going to be that period where, you know, it, it flatlines. It, like, we, we see it everywhere. Uh, Hasbro's not, Hasbro's not immune to it. Um, Mattel is not immune to it. 
Super 7 is not immune to it. They're all like, look at it right now. You can even look at the charts uh, from Brian Brink that we've been looking up uh, for uh, over at Geek Dad Life and, and, and other toy tubers have been paying attention. You can see, like, you can see that that it's a big spike and it goes, right? We even, you could even hear the, there was like a, a, a sound come from Vaughn's uh, thing. It was like, it's like, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry Vaughn, we got you um but yeah it was it was just like it literally flatlines for a while but as we know the last week of the campaign is where everything the dynamics change right that's what gilly's talking about all the, and you've experienced it multiple times it's not regularly like it, it, it happens all the time so you sort of get used to it after a while right but as a first time kickstarter you know it can be stressful it can be stressful as hell. And that's probably what Steve and Vaughn are going through right there. They're like, you kind of flatline, guys. What's going on? So um, I'm always happy to support uh, not only my friends, but but anybody with a small project that they're trying to get some attention to. And that's actually really important, too. Your marketing is is definitely uh, needs to be on point. And getting on, you know, interviews with with other comic creators and, and other comic tubers, you know what I mean? These are very important, uh, you know, uh, boosts that you, that you can utilize to, to get some more eyeballs on your, on your, on your project. So, um, on that note though, uh, the atrium, uh, Kickstarter is, uh, has 16 days to go. They've reached about one third of their goal guys. Definitely give them a like and follow, check out their Kickstarter. Um, Steve, uh, Vaughn, what can we expect and uh, what are the what are the overall tiers uh, and uh, pledge goals? Sorry, uh, pledge pledge options that, that people have right now. You want to take that one? Uh, yeah. So right now we have we've kept it pretty basic right now. So what we're really offering is three different covers um, in regards to our tiers. Right. But uh, we've only done. Um, We've only done really just one cover artist. We have another ultimate cover that we're waiting on right now, but these are the three options right now, plus the digital the digital option as well too. And then we're gonna look into get to, there might be some announcements towards the end of this week. Uh, we're just kind of sourcing some stuff now, but there might be some new cover options coming towards the end of this week. Uh, we're just kind of waiting for confirmation for a number of artists because it's probably the, probably the worst time to try to get an artist right now. It seems back to school, family stuff and whatnot going into the fall rush. Con well, season. Don't forget yeah, con, season. con season, right? So we're kind of getting everything, right? So a lot of guys are already pre-booked. So, but we're looking at some other options right now. These are the three immediate options that we have as co uh, cover options. And then we are looking at a couple other ones as well too, which hopefully we'll have announced by the end of this week. We also do have something that's pretty cool where there's a, a, a pledge level where a tier where if you support that one you actually end up in the book so you can be drawn into the book as well too as a character that's amazing which that's which uh, which level is that uh i think that's the last one okay so we're gonna the last, one? Very last one yeah. okay so let's just go through these first though so um digital digital edition we can you get for you can play you can pledge for seven dollars for the digital edition which uh includes the cover artwork by lucas falapi uh philip my apologies because I'm terrible with names. Lucas Filapi and Nikos Kustis, uh, um, 122 pages, and a thank and your name appears in the thank you section of the book. Uh, the $15 level, uh, it's the print cover A. So it's this version of the the. Um, it's sorry, it's this version right here, covered by Lucas Filapi um, and uh, Nikos Kustis. Um, and, and also, it's also included. Your name is also included in the section of the comic. Tier one also includes the digital copy of Atrium One, so you get the physical copy as well as the digital copy. And then, uh, print cover B uh, is for the fifteen dollar level. Uh, your name will appear in the book. I want to thank you, and of course, uh, you do get the digital copy. And then, print cover C is twenty five dollar level. Uh, everything with the previous level, and then you get a special thank you. Uh, and also includes the digital atrium. And finally, um, fi at the $50 level, uh, or, or is it further? Actually, it is. Here it is. So let's just cover the $50 level. $50 level is the, everything above uh, print issues of number one, your name of the comic book, and the digital copy of number one. Um, but you also get the A, B, and C bundle. So you get all three physical copies along with all three digital copies. And finally, uh, this is the one you're talking about, uh, Steve and Vaughn. Yes. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that, the drawn-in cameo at $150? Yeah, so what's going to happen is if if you support this pledge, then um, you'll just send the photo to Lucas, and Lucas will incorporate you into the story uh, as some character, uh, because we have a lot of characters in this story, um, you know, nurses, doctors, police officers, people in the crowd. 
So uh, we'll make sure that um, you get a nice prominent shot and then you can show your friends and family that you're, you're part of the world of Atrium. That's beautiful. So, um, uh, and of course that will, that will be in the final version of the book at $150 level. Uh, yeah, actually it's not, it's not, it won't be an issue one because issue one is already locked, but it will be in a, in a subsequent issue, either two, three or four or five. I was about to say that because it's actually under a limited quantity and there's, there is one spot left. Actually, you have one spot left. No, uh, no, we yeah. have 14 left, 14 or 15 left. Oh, sorry. 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 Yeah. So yeah. there, there are 15 awesome left. That's right. So there are 15 spots left. Uh, so guys, if you want to be in an actual uh, book, an actual comic book, this is your opportunity. Definitely check out that option. This, this, this is an amazing opportunity for anybody. Guys, they are now um, 23 backers uh, and only about one third of the way there. Uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is a great opportunity for, for you guys. And I really want to, uh, to thank you guys for being here tonight. It's, uh, it's, it's been great speaking to you about this uh, new project. Um, guys, what are, what are your, what are your uh, thoughts on, on the future? Like, what are your plans for the other issues? Can you give us a glimpse or a tease as to what, uh, what we can expect? Because this one seems to be uh, very much uh, uh, a, mi a mission type of thing. Uh, what, can we, what can we expect for the, for the future issues? Uh, this issue is kind of like a setup issue. Uh, you get introduced to all the players and you get uh, a taste of the world. And the way that we have it set it up, set up right now is that every issue ends almost like a cliffhanger. So it's almost like a serial. Uh, so this issue ends in a cliffhanger and you're still not in the subway system yet. That's kind of like a, it's like a flash forward. Everything that you're seeing after the crash at the beginning will be a flashback. And then once you're in the subway, uh, issue two is all action. So it's a chase, Gunfire. If you like, you know, movies like The Transporter or Pelham One Two Three, The Taking of Pelham One Two Three, anything with explosions and, you know, pyrotechnics, issue two is great. And then you get a little bit of a psychological trapped in the tunnels kind of feel as you move into issues um, three, four, five, and it kind of takes on a bit of a horror element. Um, so lots of twists and turns. Don't fall in love with anybody, but uh, it's one hell of a ride. <laughs> that's there that's there don't fall in love with it <laughs> right off the bat everyone is no no one is an exception no designated no designated survivor everybody is ready <laughs> get ready to die everybody i love it i love it um uh vaughn like uh you know um what are the plans for the future uh for massive and of course your end of the the spectrum how how are how are you doing uh for for everything well, going in the future well massive is just kind of keep on building but this is also kind of the secondary part of you know um building things out uh because like you said we're all getting older right so the other thing is the publishing side of it and i think with steve as my co-publisher and with some of the ips that we've come up with i think there's a lot of leverage to do some things in canadian comics that are a little bit different because right now there's I say there's a there's a good market, but I think everybody's still publishing everything on their own, right? And nobody's really trying to bring people in underneath a banner, right? So I think they tried it, but it didn't work out so well. But I think there's opportunities there as well, too. Because, you know, we know a lot of Canadian guys that are publishing stuff on Kickstarter or whatnot, but also I think there's an opportunity to kind of build something here, right? There's a lot of talent in, uh, above uh, in, up here in Canada. Like the amount of artists, the amount of writers – um you'd be surprised how many of your favorite creators are canadian come on guys one of the biggest one of the biggest uh publishers uh, and uh of course uh one of the biggest influencers in comics is canadian i mean the todd mcfarland come on we can't forget about good old todd, <laughs> good old todd. I mean, todd mcfarland he's, john byrne he's there's doing a, whole, a whole list you know, uh, mm -hmm. alpha you know adrian althona come on you know yeah, there are absolutely. a lot of great creators up here and those are just those are the ones with the biggest names mm -hmm. the the ones who have a higher following as well here on on the indie scene you guys would be surprised, and you know what? Yeah. Open up your horizons. You know, take a look at the at all at all the wonderful creators. Dave I want to these guys up here. Yeah, Carl Absolutely. Kershaw. There's a there's a whole bunch. And of course, our good, our, we could we could keep going. Yeah, you know our good friend Ken Lashley. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he's there too. You know, yeah, absolutely. I mean? We're gonna yeah. we're gonna show we're gonna shout out that. And of course, uh, a a huge uh, unknown like a huge name who's coming up in the scene. You know, um, uh, um, sorry, it's a. Uh, so, 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 sorry. So many different creators are coming up in the scene, um, and and people who who still have not 
uh, made it, but are, 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 you know, again, the sleeping giants, guys, be careful of those. They are, com- they are up and coming. And of course, I want to thank Vaughn and Steve uh, for being here tonight. Guys, you're welcome to stick around, uh, you know, to comment on, on Gilly's books and talk mm-hmm. about everything that we're talking about. But of course, we all have lives. So if you have to duck out, we totally understand. No, so, no. I can hang around. I feel like I can hang around too. I always to comics. Then let's, let's, let, then let, let's keep going. Gilly, my friend. Mm-hmm. How uh, how are you? How are how are things going in your neck of the woods? And of course, uh, how how's it going with the new uh, Kickstarter uh, project? Because I know that there were some issues with the last Kickstarter, and now you had to you you pivoted to this one, and this one seems like it's well on its way. So you know what? Uh, actually, let's do it this way, Gilly. You have the most experience, a lot of experience in terms of this. What can what can Vaughn and, and Steve is, expect in the next couple of days, and uh, you know for their next few projects? What uh, what can what uh, what advice can you give for not only these two uh, young young men these two young men but what else can you expect for uh, for anybody else who's interested in, in starting their own independent project uh, on Kickstarter? Um, what do you what do you say? Uh, pretty much, you have to be dedicated. You got to be focused, and don't be afraid to fail. Uh, failure is the best learning tool. Uh, Bruce Lee said that. <laughs> That's how you learn right through failure. Uh, but there's a lot. There's a lot to it. If you got a passion for it, Kickstarter is a great platform to get started on any kind of indie project. I saw Wookie Sasquatch had a comment. If you want to do a Kickstarter for something like an action figure or plastic something, how do you find someone who can mass produce them, get quote plan how much your Kickstarter needs to raise? So I'll just say this. I, I got one comic book right now uh, called Galactic Road to Mayhem. This one right here, if you just look at it, it's action figure fodder. Okay. I grew up in the 90s, uh, 80s, and I love Saturday morning cartoons. One big thing, again, you see a project has promise. I think the most important thing to do is build an audience. That takes a lot of time. But if you have an audience, if you show that there's people interested in backing you or supporting you, that's a good start. From there, if you look to dialogue with some toy companies, you'll find it's really expensive. But if you have an audience, it kind of helps. If you have the finances already – that kind of helps. So the, the first and, and most and foremost thing is to just keep at it. If you really dedicate about it, it's not for the faint of heart, but it's so rewarding. It's almost therapeutic uh, for Vaughn and Steve. What I just recommend you guys to do is just, it's a learning thing. Just take it as it comes and grow your little audience, the backers that you got right now that are, that, that are backing your project. Be transparent through the campaign updates. Try to get some feedback from them. And just keep that going. Build up a page. If you got like an Atrium page, a social media handle page, where you could just uh, um, direct people towards Atrium. And look, here's the thing. I know when it comes to financing something, I, I'm a fan. I'm a fanboy, right? I'm a geek myself. I mean, I, there's so many things I love to support, right? Whether it's Marvel, DC, toys, video games, whatever. So when you're putting your money into an indie project, you don't know much about that project. Because sometimes you might not want to open the wallet right away. But don't ever underestimate the power of just sharing a project, just sharing it. Hey, guys, this look cool. Check it out. Just that can open the doors and get it out there to so many people. Because Kickstarter, even putting it on Kickstarter doesn't mean anything. People have to find it. And I've had people that found some of my projects on Kickstarter doing a deep, deep, deep search. They went down in the mines. They had their little hat with the little light on. And they were looking and they found my project. It wasn't thrown out there. It wasn't, you know, there's so many people launching projects at a time. <laughs> so just keep just keep the momentum. If it's something you're really passionate about, don't be afraid to ask questions, ask for help. Um, and, you know, just stay positive and stay hopeful because it's not easy. But we, like I said, I've been in it a couple of years and Vaughn and uh, Steve been at it on different circles, but they're just bringing their expertise now into a comic. So there's a lot of time that goes into this and dedication. So if it's something you love, just keep at it. And you never know, you might get that spotlight you need. You might, something might happen where it's just like, you get what you get, Uh, but stay motivated and stay positive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what, Um, since, since Wookiee Sasquatch, it's pretty much a question for all of us. Uh, If you want to do a Kickstarter for something like an action figure or a figure or plastic something, how would you find somebody who can mass produce them, get a quote, and plan uh, how much your your Kickstarter needs to raise? Uh, what 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 were the steps that uh, that each of you guys had to come uh, you know to to formulate this whole idea? You've had you've got artists, you've got writers, you've got people who are inkers, you've got you know guys who are supposed to be doing the you know the the lettering, but wink. Anyway, uh, you know you got you got all these guys who uh, who are involved in the project. 
uh you know wh- like how do you how do you guys spec that out uh I, I, you know uh gilly first we'll, we'll go with you first and we'll talk we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll ask because the economics in canada are very different from the economics in in, in, in the united states so gilly how do, how do you go about that like you you have you've actually gone through several artists uh th- throughout your run haven't you Right. So, uh, again, it's just a working relationship. There's different ways to do this. I've learned in one of my campaigns, I was financing for a matter, matter of fact, for Galactic Runners of Mayhem. When I just jumped into this campaign, I started a campaign for a hundred page book. I only had like three or four pages done. Um, and then COVID hit. Uh, so we got hit really bad. And then the artist on that project, um, he went through a, just something so tragic. He lost his daughter at birth. So okay. he's not mentally in the mind frame and start churning out pages. So th- again, you're dealing with people. We all got lives. We all got stuff. But if you're really serious, you have to look at the game plan. If I think Atrium, it's a they, it's a five issue miniseries. They already started. If I already heard them correctly, they're already on issue three, right? So they're just trying to get an audience. So they probably set their goal low just to get some just to get something funded and just to say, hey, we got something cool going on and and and, and taking it from there. But again, there's it depends. If you there's so many different artists with a different type of style. You might be looking for a style that's a certain way. There's an artist that draws that. You might be looking for a black and white. There's here's the thing. When it comes to comics, and this is about comics, one person draws, right? Then you have someone else that colors, right? And then you have someone else that applies the letters. You could find one that does all. That'll change on a page rate basis, right? You guys see a comic like, oh, it's probably not that expensive. If you just go buy a 30 page comic and that artist was I don't know, sixty dollars a page, a hundred dollars a page. If it's a hundred dollars a page, we're talking about three thousand dollars for a thirty-page comic. We didn't even get into the colorist. What's his rate per page, right? So, a lot of this, it's at least in my case, I, I fund a lot out of my own pocket just to get things moving. Um, and then whatever I can, it's like like Hollywood, right? Hey, twenty million to make this movie, and then we put it out to to the public. We made. 80 million back. Wow, that's a success. Or you make barely make even, you know, like that's just the game. So it depends how you want to market it, how you want to push it, and what your game plan is. Do you want to launch a uh, mini series? Do you want to launch one big fat graphic novel at once? I mean, there's just so many metrics that come involved with toys. That's a whole other thing. A 3D sculptor that sculpts it, you know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's like a 3D modeler, right? Like th- how much their rate is. It's, you're opening a can of worm that go a Pandora's box, but if you're if you're really passionate, uh, join forums, look on Reddit, like just search like how to start this, how to start that. Don't be afraid to ask questions because there's a lot of people out online willing to help. Um, and ignore the trolls and, and all the all the information you want look that's positive. You also get some some trolls out there to want to shoot you down. Ignore those and take on the positives again. And if I can just add this, don't uh, diminish the importance of social media. So if you can, you know, go to X, I guess, former Twitter, Instagram, anything like that, a lot of artists are on there and you're able to communicate with them. So you can either jump into a chat or DM them or whatever, and you'd be surprised. They're very, very open in, in communicating with you. And if you're actually asking them, you know, for work, there's a good chance they'll respond. Now they'll tell you they're too busy, or at least you'll be able to get their rates and availability. Um, so yeah, don't be shy in reaching out for sure. And don't expect them to work for free, right? I mean, unless unless you know them really well. I know a lot of writers are going, "Hey, I got this cool idea. Can you just draw it out and maybe we could do something?" No, no, no. You got to sound professional in each and every way. And like Steve so put it so nicely, you know ask about their schedule, see, see if they're interested and in, in dialogue. 100%. I mean, like, uh, your, your, your creative team has experience too, uh, Steve. I mean, like you, you talked about the colorists and, um, your illustrators and stuff. Like, I, I believe that, um, you said earlier in the, in the episode that they, so one of them worked on the Savage Dragon. Is, is that actually, is that actually? It continues to has worked wow. on it for, for the longest time, like, as, as far as I know, as far back as I know. So yeah, he's, he's basically, been the chief colorist uh for uh, eric larson savage dragon so we have we have like you know a really top-notch team i would say like the the writers are probably the greenest <laughs> out of the team but we've been writing in other other mediums whether it's been film um or even creating our own stuff uh, in the past and and like peter has had some of his scripts uh go pretty far in in some writing um competitions and stuff so there's a lot of i guess external validation and a lot of experience behind this team and it's just now our job to get in front of uh the the audience that doesn't know who we are and um you know 
bring them along for the ride. Absolutely. And uh, very exciting. Of course, the project itself is, 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 is extremely exciting uh, a prospect to, to, to go through. Um, so, Gilly, uh, getting back to um, uh, the new, the, your project, actually, uh, which is, again, this is, how many books is this now? You, you've done like five or six different books at, at this point, right? Like, actually, even more than that, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I've, I've ranged from a few different genres. I got Lair which I did on Kickstarter, Pistoleta, which is a Western, uh, Under the Flesh, which is a post-apocalyptic. And then I jumped into like the sci-fi fun uh, with the Galactic Ronus of Mayhem. And what we have here with the Gangon Saga, this is the first kind of spinoff. Uh, it was always a Galactic Ronus of Mayhem. We did a four-issue run that was self-published through crowdfunding. And then we had our volume one graphic novel. Uh, so we have the story focusing on Gangon, he's our gunslinger gecko father, and it's this story shows how he reluctantly uh, assumes the role of capybara dad, and how he, and how his fates and the fates of the capybaras intertwine. There's a cool video there. I mean, it, yeah, if you want to play it, it, it explains it way better than I could. If you got someone to do the voice work there as well, but um, so it's just a pass. It's a it's a love letter. It's a love letter to my childhood. You know, Saturday morning cartoons, video games, anime influences there. If you like Cowboy Bebop, you'll see a lot of influences there. Uh, and this story particularly is going to be black and white. It's kind of like my homage to like the Mirage TMNT in 1986. I wanted to do this kind of, I, I say spinoff, but it's like a spin back because it's a prequel to the moment Gangon becomes the father of the Capybaras, our main Capybaras, which will eventually become the Galactic Rodents of Mayhem. And so if you miss Galactus of Ronald's of Mayhem, in one of my tiers, I do offer a volume one trade paperback. Uh, and the cover of that was designed by Aaron Hazuri. And if you guys don't know him, but he's worked on the TMNT cartoon line of NECA. He's, he's worked on some of the box art. So I got him to do a, a, a cover for uh, Galactic Ronald's of Mayhem for the compilation trade paperback that we're offering. And in there, it tells the story. There's a cover right there. And in there, it tells the story of uh, the Galactic Ronald's of Mayhem and how just an interstellar bounty just sets everything to place and they're trying to escape this interstellar bounty at an interstellar bounty at the same time figuring out that the person who placed this bounty has a has a dark connection with gangon um and his past uh so it's it's a fun ride i had fun making it. it it's just a love letter in every sense of the word and this is what i wanted to do with comics i wanted to tell a story I wanted to challenge myself to, because here's the thing, right? I, we know the turtle's been around, what's it, 30 years? Like, we know, you know, and there's been a ton of TMNT ripoffs. I wanted to do something that brought you that feeling of nostalgia, but in something fresh. You know, it's always hard to get into a new story, right? If you watch a TV show, it's always hard to jump into a new TV show. Do I want to get invested? Do I want to, like, go down this road? So my thing is to, to give you that feeling of nostalgia but wrap it in a new package with this new, you know, universe. Um, and, you know, it's hard to get out there because, again, you're competing with TMNT. You're competing with Marvel, with Disney, with Star Wars. You're competing with everybody. And I'm just little old Gilly with this comic. So it's hard to, you know, get the shockwaves out there to, to spurn the masses or to turn the masses. So it's, it's hard. But, again, it's, 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 I love this. So it's, I, I, it's hard for me to stop. Um, and the hope is I could eventually see these become action figures. Hopefully I can see it become a video game. I mean, that's the dream. It probably won't. I mean, I've been at it for nine years. Maybe it won't happen now. Maybe it'll happen when I'm 65. Great. I mean, but it's just, it's a love letter. And, uh, this is what I do with, with making comics. Hopefully it could become something more. Well, I mean, it, it, what, what you're saying is not untrue. I mean, uh, look, uh, right now, Invincible is freaking going through like a tear on, uh, on, yeah. on, um, uh, what is it? Uh, a Prime Video, Amazon, right? Prime, yeah. And and that thing's been around for fifteen years at least. I think uh, uh, Steve Vaughn. I, if, if I remember being an Image Comics way back when, mm -hmm. right? It's been at least ten years. I know that for a fact, it's right? And, and again, sometimes sometimes they'll the the, the companies will uh, the what's it called? The studios will actually sign you to a um, a retainer, right? They'll then and they'll keep your book uh, or your whole concept for like two, three, four. You might not even see it uh, by you know by the time. Yeah, the option, the rights to it, yeah. and then you know, yeah. no, you nothing might happen in a couple of years. But yeah, uh, that's that's kind of how. It but goes. when it finally happens, all of a sudden they got to call you in, right? They they got to say, all right, you know what? Here, sign this, right? Get this ready. 
uh, you know, we, we want you on a, on a, a on call for a cons- consultation whenever it happens, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. I mean, you know, our, our good friend, Adrian Alfona, you know, he's when, when they did, um, somebody remind me now, um, runaways. Steve, yeah. Steve, I knew Steve was going to get it first. Uh, when they did runaways. Yeah. I, you know, I was, I was talking to Adrian. I'm, I'm like, so what happened? He's like, yeah, they called me in. They had me there for one day. Never heard from them again. You know what I mean? That, that's the kind of thing that happens with these bigger studios. Right. And, he, you know, as so, in so much that they just wanted to see what he was thought of, and you know, just give his blessing or whatever, and they took it in a completely different direction or what you know, what have you. But it's it's always that 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 dream to 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 you know to get a mini series or to get a pilot, right, and see and see where that goes, right. So it's it's very interesting. And as a matter of fact, I think uh, I think Runaways actually had like five episodes or something like that, didn't it? Like it actually made a a, a small splash. Yeah, they had a short run. I'm not sure what uh, network they were on, but I do know that they were around for a bit. I think it was um, Hulu. I think Hulu was it yeah, was it Hulu original. Yeah, I think it was before Hulu, but it's that same one. I think they went for two seasons. I think. Oh, was it two seasons? Wow. I think that's, so. that's was it was it the same? Was it the same? Because did Hulu have uh, Legion as well too? Because I think they were kind yeah, of they were the same one. Oh, you know it's that, it's kind that of offshoot that was the Fox one, but it wasn't Fox. Like it's a Fox channel, but it wasn't mm-hmm. like directly Fox. Um, it, no matter what, it's. It, no matter what, it did more episodes than Wonder Woman. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, Wonder <laughs> Woman was like yeah, one episode, and boom, it was gone. Yeah, pilot, was, pilot and that's it. That yeah. was pretty much crazy. So yeah, that's uh, it, it's always good. And and you know, Hulu is not the biggest player in the game, but I mean, like that's still a, a substantial uh, thing. So again, one day they might option this one. Uh, you know, like uh, whether it's Atrium or whether it's uh, uh, Gangon or or Galactic Rodents of the of, of the galaxy. You know, these are these are wonderful properties that. Um, uh, that may one day uh, see a Ninja Turtle kind of you know type of type of magic moment. You never know. And Ninja Turtle is just that property that refuses to die. It just keeps coming oh and back and back. It's absolutely crazy. But I love it, right? It's just you know it. the, yeah. it's a generational thing. It just yeah. will not disappear. Watching just, it with my son, I'm watching the 2012 series with him, and it's just fun just to see how he reacts. And it's that that's the magic I think when it's done right. Um, I, in our case. Uh, with Atrium and 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 Galactic Ones of Mayhem, the Gang on Saga, what have you, it, it's hard because again, we don't to get to that point. You have to have something interesting. But again, a lot of again, we're in an age right now where we want to bank on a short thing. So if we do a reboot or if we like sign a Netflix show, it's on s- stuff that already has a major baked in audience. If you look like Resident Evil was a popular video game, and I think they just they they had a couple iterations, one on Netflix, and they had a movie. It's because it sold so many million copies. So even Ryan Reynolds, he has his, you know, his mint mobile phone. Ryan Reynolds also has a film production company. And I found out recently that his production company got the rights to Biker Mice of Mars. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's that's cool. So it's like, you know, I'm coming out with something really cool. I mean, how can I compete with Biker Mice of Mars, right? Like, or if, how do I get to that point where I can pitch this to Ryan Reynolds. Like it's very hard. It's it's such a hard window, but I think that's why we just got to keep on going and hope through a connection, through going to a con, going through something where you meet someone and they're like, wow, they, these guys, you know, they've been going at it for a couple of years. They built a steady audience um, and it has mainstream appeal. Yeah, we can do something. So it's just showing that you're marketable, uh, even though it looks like nothing's going on, don't lose hope and just, Again, I, I do this because it's I find it like therapy for me. I just I mean, I'm sure Steve and Vaughn could relate when you get a new page of Atrium where you get like the artist send you the new page and you look at it. It's just like it just does something. It's such I don't know, for me anyway, it's such a good feeling. It's like, oh man, I I, I it's like now you want to share this with someone. And that's yeah. our thing. We want to share this, but it's hard because <laughs> again, you're you're competing with so many it, it's like the market is so oversaturated. And I think that's it's it's like good and bad because again. You miss out on a lot of hidden gems. This is even with video games. If you go into indie indie video games, there's so many crazy, great looking games that will just pass over your nose. But most of the stuff is the Call of Duty, all the mainstream stuff. It's like okay, okay, and you miss a lot of these hidden gems. It happens in video games. It's it happens in 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 in, in, in the indie scene with comics. Um, so it, again, it's just <laughs> just get in the trenches and just fight. And just share your word and just be genuine out there and hopefully people could support your stuff. And if you if you have a buddy like Mega J who's an influencer with toys and he can sh- and he can share your <laughs> he can share you can share your, you know, 
your project to his audience. That's awesome because Mega J, again, I appreciate that. You don't understand how dude, you be laughing, man. You don't understand. Yeah, you guys like, are talking about somebody else. Like, seriously, what the no, hell? Yeah, we all do. You don't understand, man. Like, there's, I've yeah, he's, tried. He's spitting facts, man. Pure facts. No, yeah. I've tried on the comic side of things, trying to reach high, high influencers, and they're just interested in mainstream stuff. That's it. As, as cool as your book, like, that's, and I've tried. Mega, if I would, I tried sunk money into super chats i've just i've tried organically to, i tried so it's hard to promote your stuff so when you open up your your platform your channel i appreciate that it means so much and i mean it's part of part of the sharing that helps spotlight something good and maybe something can happen so thank you for doing that because you you guys never have to think thing. you never have to thank me or or any of us you know the the, the what, what we see the, the important thing about what we're doing here is we see something which is special. You know what I mean? Like, like even if I didn't know Vaughn and, and Steve, you know, I know, I know them from, from, from time. Right. But even if I didn't know them, if I'd seen Atrium and the, and I handed, uh, was handed that ash can, trust me, like, you know, uh, our good friend, Hugh Rookwood, who's another wonderful artist, you know, he, he was at, um, he was at uh, uh fan expo this past, uh, this, this past weekend, um, you know, uh, caught up a little bit and he said hey do you guys do you know what steven bono do i'm like no what, what are they doing and he handed me this ash can i'm like what since when why didn't they like you know i, I want to talk about this right so you know and then you know i reached out to steve he's like all right where's your booth and like, i don't have a booth what are you talking about <laughs> right and, and he said i'm here friday i'm like the one day i'm not there these two guys are there and i wanted to you know i wanted to get them on camera i wanted to talk a lot about this little thing so i said screw it let me talk to greg because greg was actually with me Right. And he's like, yeah, I'll get you. I'll get you with these guys. I'm like, OK, we'll all go together. And guess what? Greg's not here. What the hell? <laughs> but he did it. You know what, though? He still did his job because he connected I'm, us I'm to be on the show just, right now. So it all works out. I've just riven him because, you yeah, know, yeah. we, we, we all love Greg. And this is typical of Greg. Like <laughs> we want him to be here. He's not here. But that's OK. He did his job, which is exactly what Steve said. Uh, you know, Greg. If, I, if I could just mention one thing, and, and Gilly, uh, I'm sure you'll agree with this because Vaughn and I talk about this all the time, is that when you're an indie like creator uh, and, and Jay, like I do actually I do actually draw. So like I do I actually illustrate now. Um, when you have to wear so many hats, it almost diminishes your ability to do the things that you need creating the book, like post creating the book, like effectively. So if you're writing and then you're, you're doing promotion and then you're doing a podcast and then you have a family, something's got to give. And it's, it's a tough, it's a tough juggling act. For sure, it's almost it? impossible. I work two jobs. I got two kids. One is two, gonna be two. Oh, you gotta think about it. One is five. <laughs> Bro, how are you sleeping? <laughs> how are you sleeping? And then the, the whole, the whole, so you know, crowdfunding, creating stuff, right? Creating yeah. stuff, to, and then the promoting stuff. I don't, dude. I, I'm have, I'm have to retire soon. I might just stick with just one book for a while. I don't know. It's just, it's tough. It's rough, but we do it because we love it. We love stories. Absolutely. We want to tell good stories so that's what keeps us going but it's hard <laughs> it is hard but fun but fun absolutely and you, you know steve I, I knew you i knew you you drew but i was i didn't want to i didn't want to like you know uh, lose a vibe i mean like oh yeah like i didn't <laughs> no, want to no, lose shadow the thing though like i do draw but i'm i basically i've i've been writing more so and now that i've had more time to kind of work on the craft um, you know, I've taken it upon myself to do that kind of stuff. Um, so, but the, the cool thing about it is, especially when you can draw and write at the same time, and then you see what your artist then puts in front of you, it's like, I didn't even see it that way, but you killed it. Absolutely. 100%. And, you know, we all contribute things to projects that we, that we're passionate about. And, you know, right now this one, this one is definitely, uh, uh taking priority for, uh, for, <clears throat> Uh, Comics Asylum, and of course, the team here uh, at Atrium. Uh, Gilly, so for your project in particular, um, what uh, what can we expect? This is a prequel, is that correct? Yeah, it's a it's a spin back, right? Another spin off, right? Still call it a spin back, but it's a prequel to when uh, Gangon, our father figure, uh, actually how he intertwines with the uh, Capybaras, Bash Ripple, and Mona Lisa. Uh, from the moment he gets them, and they got they got one little cool mission together, and it's just setting up. Cut kind of my again, of course, in a perfect world, if I if I had that disposable income, it would be to have the prequel kind of this little spin back become its own thing, where you see him 
on all these crazy missions and how he trained them to be the capable bounty hunters that they are when you read the Galactic Wonders of Mayhem. Because in Galactic Wonders of Mayhem, they're already they're all, all, all grown. So here is the moment he meets them as kids and just what happens and how he takes on the role of, of fatherhood, of being a father. So I guess also that I'm a dad of two, I kind of poured a lot of that into this in a way now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> so there's a lot there with this story. It's, it's again, it's what I love as, as a kid watching, you know, a, a great cartoon or going into a movie and, and catching something that just hits you. Like I always wanted to just create stories and just get that rise out of people that enjoyed it, you know, or maybe didn't like it, or maybe have a character that they hated about it. So this is just more fleshing out the universe. Galactic Wonders of Mayhem, as much as I'd love to keep that going, uh, I'm going to put that on pause and I'm starting to like kind of craft these little spinoffs, so to speak. So I have this one featuring Gangon. And then I have another one after this, which will be centered around an anthropomorphic ninja frog, a cyber ninja frog called Duo. His name will be Duo. And that one, interestingly enough, is the person who backed our first campaign, how Atrium has on their campaign like a cameo. You could get featured in a book. I ridiculously put something for $1,000. I didn't think anyone would have backed it. And it was like, your character will be a mainstay character that's how i worded it in the grom universe and someone sure enough put a thousand dollars on it so i <laughs> got to work creating a script and that spinoff around that character will be coming out uh after gang on so it's just fleshing the universe of grom so to speak um and then hopefully we'll get back into grom when we have a, a better flow and we can keep out the future grom stories running at a faster clip Steve Vaughn, you you undercut yourselves, guys. Holy crap! You gotta you gotta put that thousand dollar tier up, man. That's a lot of lot of characters. We're hit. doing it to, to save Lucas. We've got a lot of characters in the book, so we don't want to burn them out. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you have the recurring character who comes up, you know the the sage, you know who just shows up every now and then for a grand. I mean, come on. I, mean, <laughs> I, I threw it a shot in the dark. I didn't think anyone would took take it. Someone backed it, and like they wanted to do this frog character. We got to talking. You know, so it's it's gonna happen. But again, sometimes you gotta shoot like that. And the, the community, the community, it's the community itself is 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 not only generous, but they're also they're also rabid, right? I've noticed that the yeah. the, the 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 real fans, right, whether they be toy fans or comic book fans, they are rabid, right? They want to be involved. They want to to give feedback. They want to, you know, for good or for bad. You got some trolls out there. <laughs> you got some guys who are, you know, oh, Spider Man's not supposed to be thin. He's supposed to be big and bulky, and you know, like there, there's 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 going to be, you know, the um, what are they called? The uh, the the script keepers, the you know, the the, the storyteller, the ones who want to keep everything in a in a certain box, right? But you know, then you got the guys who are like, they just want to support comics for 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 what comics are, and of course, as you said, you know, they want to support, but also want to be in the book. Steve, man, you, just put in a just, just, just put in a ten thousand dollar tier. Like, see what happens. You never know. Man. <laughs> no, because like you said, some people really resonate with that. Like, maybe just for some reason, the Galactic World of Mayhem just hit something in them. And they're like, and they wanted to the support. So you will get loyal backers like that. I have a few on my campaigns that I've noticed. Every time I back something, they always return. So the, here's a good thing about Kickstarter. The bad thing is that again, you put your stuff out there. They they don't really have a platform that really spots lights uh, a lot of the indie books. And the Kickstarter choice or Kickstarter pick, I mean, that's, I don't even know. I mean, I've done a, I never had a Kickstarter pick. I think maybe one one campaign I had, it was one of the Lovecraftian horror stories I had where it was a Kickstarter pick of the week or something like that. So it's so hard to get noticed. But again, when you have those people that back your stuff and you see them back in your stuff, I also noticed that every time I do like a Grom book, when I was bringing it out uh, chapter wise, I've noticed like always I'd get a few new backers. You'd see some returning backers if they go didn't go to the second campaign, they would go to the, you know, the, the last campaign that featured everything. So you you kind of see these patterns here or there. And I appreciate those people that go all in and are willing to pay three hundred dollars for an original art page by Sebastian, who does this work. Like I don't have that kind of money where I could just say three hundred for original art page, but I appreciate that some of my backers did and supported my book in that way. And they have that, and they're going to frame it up in their wall or whatever. Like, that, I don't know. That's for me, that's big. That's deep. I'm like, wow. 
<laughs> so stuff like that is what I love about crowdfunding. And when you do get to get your audience and they can support in that way, it's just, again, it's amazing. It's amazing. Absolutely, absolutely. It's 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 one of a kind. So, uh, G Gilly, you have uh, actually you have also, you actually have reached your goal on this particular project. Is that correct? Yeah. I so here's the thing. Now we're talking about getting traction and trying to. So this this project, I had the artwork done a hundred percent way beforehand. I financed it way beforehand. Okay. So I'm thinking when I launch the campaign goal, I mean, of course, I want to cover the finances to that cost to print it. And if I could make the money back I put into it would be great. Uh, so I started with a very small goal. I think I put my goal at $500. And my reasoning behind it was, okay, it's a new campaign that'll be launched. If I could fund it within the day, hopefully that ticks off an algorithm like, you know, oh, recently discovered or new projects. Like it would just show like a fund, you know, that it funded. I, I would hope that would kick into some algorithm that would push it and into the traffic of main people who just log into Kickstarter. So again, most of the people that back there were returning backers, maybe have like four or five that are, that were new backers. So a lot of it was most of my same backers. So I didn't get that initial algorithm push that I thought, but this is just experimenting, but with doing such a low goal to see if it gets, hits an algorithm and it ticks it up. And then you just feature it as a project that funded and it just circulates. But, it's so hard to just figure out how the heck Kickstarter works in that way. And promotion wise, you can put an ad on Facebook, you put an ad on Instagram. It's so, again, it's so hard. <laughs> it's like, it has to be consistent. It has to be habitual. And even with promoting, like just the ads, like it had never, you got to put money into just putting the ads out there too. So there's a lot, man. I'm just telling you, I wouldn't recommend, I tell this to people, I wouldn't recommend the crowdfunding to my worst enemy. Because it's it's so the pressure that goes on through the stress it's unbelievable. It really has to be something that you love to do. You, I never went in with the the thought like I'm gonna get rich quick. I got in with like it's cool that I people are helping me support my work, um, and hopefully that could lead into a paying job with like a, a DC or something where they're like, okay, this guy never heard of him, but he's been putting out some good stuff. Let's give him a chance with one of our C list superheroes, you know. And maybe that can get a job opportunity. And there you can get more of the audience. Because of the main audience in comic books is Marvel and DC, Image, Dark Horse. It's that what takes everything. Um, so it's hard to to get published with them. And it's hard to even, I don't know, like impress them. I don't know. It's, it's hard, man. It's hard. It's like a I don't know, it's it's hard. It's still a dream. Like I said, maybe if I'm 70 and I can write my first issue with Marvel, I'll consider that a W. Hey, Gilly. Um in regards to that, have you yeah. done, is it only Kickstarter that you've done? Just for our knowledge, because like we're still green in this whole process, right? So we've been kind of scouting out a couple of the other ones. And I know some of the other platforms come with their own stigmas and stuff like that. And they definitely do. But if you're about storytelling, put it out there so people can find your book. If you, you know, just to try to reach as much. I've used Kickstarter. I've used Indiegogo. I've used them both. And I know there's another one. I can't think of it. Is it what a Fund Zoom? Comic? Zoop? Zoop. No. Yeah, Zoop exists as well, too. I think there's Zoop. also Fund My Comics, so that might be... Fund My Comics is also a new one, so I haven't checked that one out yet. Um, but Zoop, it was supposed to be crowdfunding just for comics, and I like that because people are just looking for new comic book properties. But to get your campaign on there, it's not open beta where anyone can just put their campaign. It's It's kind of pre-selected so a lot of artists that have a name or a lot of writers okay. that are kind of connected already are mm -hmm. kind of spearheading this whole zoop thing um although some some other campaigns do get featured but i put galactic runners of mayhem to try to get a bump to try to get a push it never got accepted so and if you look at the i mean again if you look at the quality of this comic book i mean the cover art is great but the interior cart the interior art you know matches up yes, you know this nice. is this is top duty stuff we're playing with but again, I'm trying to get the audience, right? Okay, let me make a J. Just one quick shot, right? Just because I, I didn't know what you were doing the whole thing right there. Right? So it's it's top quality work. Um, and again, you we're no one's in the industry if you want to go by that. But you wouldn't guess that if you see this like next to like spawn or something. Like it looks like it could, you know, it could it could match up, you know. So again, with Zoop, I was hoping just again, traction. You're looking for any kind of campaign, any kind of crowdfunding platform to get out there. So uh, there's some stigmas. It just happens. It is. 
But as people know you as creators and you're just trying to get, I'm just trying to get my book to anybody that would be open to reading it. So I'll put it anywhere, man. If you guys open up a crowdfunding platform, let me know. Mega J, you're doing something. I'll, I'm throwing it on anywhere so people could find my stuff because, again, it's it's hard to just find, you know, this stuff. So yeah. that could be another way for, for financing your book, maybe, you you know, or, or how you do your launch. Maybe the single issues could be on Kickstarter. Maybe the collected books could be on Indiegogo. You know what I mean? So you just, hey, we just got to get out there. Try every which way, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Um, Oh, what the hell? Uh, I, I, one, one other thing I wanted to ask, uh, since, since, uh, this has been a big thing for like, because, because as you know, Gilly, I've been trying to help out Travis, who was really green on the, on the Kickstarter model, right? I, I like, I, I kept telling him, at least with the, with the toy type of thing, right? He's doing display options for toys and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, you got to do a video, right? Because again, it, it, his, his is very sp- specific, right? Because mm-hmm. he stacks all these things up. You can't even see this, you can't even see the stack, um, um, system. Because everybody, they're all standing on the stacks, right? So I was like, you gotta, you gotta do a video because if 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 you show a video where somebody's stacking these things up and how they connect with magnets, that's how people visually they people understand that. Be right? all over that. Yeah. Uh, have you noticed? Because when you first started this whole idea, you you didn't have a video initially, but eventually you put one up. Have you noticed that the video gives you a, a you know a bit of an edge, or or is it is it something that doesn't really help at all? Uh, with comics like what, what what's your what's your experience with that because you have it looks like somebody put together some motion graphics for you and stuff like that or, or did you actually put all that together uh i actually had someone that i work with put that together and had them do a voiceover i mean if you guys play if you guys go on and play it's just it's gonna sound really cool but again for me comics even though with its static images and a picture is worth a thousand words so imagine you know how much words you see in a comic book panel right a comic book page so many panels but it's a it's a blueprint it's a visual blueprint you know, I mean, a lot of, I mean, Marvel movies, right? They started as comic books, right? So if you're going to do a campaign, I feel like it just helps to just sell your stuff to have a video for it. Uh, I, I've done the videos where I'm the one talking. I'm not interesting. Who wants to see my face? You just want to see the art. You know, so I, and again, since a part of me is visual and I love movies, so I'm like, let me make it as like a little movie trailer. You know what I mean? And I'll just use the images and just that's how I'll sell it. I've hired people to do soundtracks like, like you go to one of my old Grom campaigns, we have a, a, a Saturday morning cartoon theme song, for Christ's sake. You know, like, I'm tapping into all that to put it out there and to sell it. So for Atrium, I see it as, like, it's kind of, like, um, action-oriented. I mean, you can cook up a trailer. Oh, yeah. um, and if you're that's, not good at that, for yeah, sure. yeah. And just and then if you guys don't want to get on, you know, just do that. And just it, – it, it would be – I don't mean to sound harsh, but it would be stupid not to have a video. I would rather just have it, even if it's not a great one, but just something that talks about why you're interested about the book or just that sells the work itself. Um, and again, that's pressure. I know some people are like, I ain't trying to do a video. I know, and I get it. But for me, it helps, and it's just it's worth going the extra mile to put out a video. A lot of people are visual anyway. You know, They want to see something. Which uh, which campaign was it that had the theme song? I'm curious. Um, I could I could drop you the link. Yeah, um, there's there's Galactic Rotors of Mayhem one through four. Yeah, comic book you, season one. Yeah, uh, let me, you know what? Let me try to find. Uh... <laughs> I'd love to hear yeah, the now. I'm curious. I'm curious to hear this yeah, theme song. Let me, I'm, I'm, let me. I'm literally curious now to hear this theme song. I, I, I would love to tell me tell me which one it is. Uh, if it's Galactic Rotors of Mayhem comic book season one, uh, or you know, the. My... Yeah, I'm just gonna click on something, see what happens. I'm just, I'm just curious. Okay, there's nothing on this one, so yeah, let me try the, let me try the other one. Come on. I just want to hear this theme song now. I'm just like, <laughs> you got a theme song? Oh no, you got to the bottom. Okay, this is where you're talking. Is that the one? Um, I, I, okay, here we go. I got one. So I have two different ones, but this is one that's just you're gonna hear the music. I'm gonna plop it into your link there. Yeah, give me the, give me the chat. Give me the chat. Yeah. I'm, cu- I'm just now. I'm just curious. I'm just. Now, I have. I have an updated <laughs> one that has like um some visual imagery and like the bouncing Grom logo that goes with like the subtitles of the work because it reminded me of some Disney singalongs as a kid. So I can't find that link right now. Just but that's the closest one I could find. That right. should be where you can at least hear the, the music and just you could feel the energy. All right. Let's 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 have a look. Let's have a look at this one, everybody. Let's have a look at this one. Um. But wait a second. Okay, I don't think YouTube is going to work that way. Give me one second. I'll just yeah, yeah, I'll download. But it, but is this the? 
Is this the one where you can? Um... It's it's the theme song. Okay, the theme song. You're gonna right. hear it. Like you'll hear it. You just you know, you could just picture it as a <laughs> as a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let me let me let me grab that. Uh, so here it comes. I'm just gonna put it up for everybody so we can hear this awesome theme song. All right, so so let me let me take a look at this. All right, hey, stop it. No, that's not how it works. Come here. I want you to open up the. There we go. Okay. And then I want to. Give me one second. All right, I got it now. So here, check this out, everybody. Let's uh, let's enjoy this uh, this little trailer uh, from Gilly Rats Comics. Let's have a look at this, guys. I'm excited. Let's find out what this is about. Okay, that that was <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, Holy crap! You 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 actually paid somebody to actually put that song together, uh, Gilly. Yeah, so I wrote the song like I had it out in my head. I wrote the lyrics out, and I found this great guy, Zalan Talis, and he was doing some stuff at the time. And I sent it to him. I was like, dude, I want it to sound like a '90s cartoon theme song. He oh. came back with that when I first heard it. <laughs> I had tears coming down my eyes. I'm like, this was just so good. And, and a little side note, I oh man, I think it's Marv Wasserman. I can't even Ron Wasserman, the guy who did the nineties. The, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, X-Men yeah. theme song. The X-Men, the X-Men theme song. Yeah. I was on a stream with him and I got him to listen to it. He absolutely loved it. Um, so again, man, I, I would love to just see that as a cartoon or as an action figure toy line. Like that's my dream. Um, so again, I gotta build up the audience to show that we, you know what I mean, or someone that that sees the potential in it, you know, wants to buy in or something. I was, you know, to, to get it out there because it sells, it sells. The time I couldn't do too many cons yet just because with the family and the jobs and everything. But the time I, I did go out to a convention, I had the poster up and I had everything galactic bonus. I mean, kind of like, what the heck is they're all laughing and like, because it, you know, it sells itself. And once you know how cool a capybara is, I don't know if you guys know what a capybara yeah. is. I never knew what a capybara was, but Sebastian, we had worked together on a horror book called Lair. It was really dark. And we're like, well, let's do something fun. I want to do something that was like TMNT because that's I just love that. I'm like, let's do something like that. I'm like, what animal we're going to do? He's like, let's do capybaras. I'm like, capy what? I don't know what a capybara was. And the moment I Googled it, and he told me, this is what he told me that sold me. He said, they're the most chill animal in the universe. He said, they get along with crocodiles. When he said that, and I Googled it, and I saw an image of a capybara with like a ton of crocodiles, and they don't see him as a sandwich. They see him as respect. Like, I, the, it just came out of me. And I just, the, I got started writing the script. I started coming up with the characters, Bash, Ripple, Mona, Lisa, and just, it flowed. So, <laughs> I, it's just, I, that's what it does. And it's not a TMNT ripoff, but I pay big homage to TMNT in there. But when you read it, it's its own thing, and that's what I love. That it's its own thing, and the characters are great and lovable, and it has their story. So, let's see, man. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's crazy. So, what kind of what kind of uh, pledge opportunities do the people have for this particular book, uh, Gilly? So, for this one, they could either get the Gang on Saga with the uh, original cover, or they can get uh, a tier with two covers, right? Because some people that are comic creators, they'll just you know they they want a variant cover. 
So I haven't gone crazy with the variant cover options. I know there's some campaigns over like six or seven. I'm just not there. But again, I offer you the second one. You could do the bundle with the two um, variant covers. And then I'm offering the trade paperback to Galactic Moments of Mayhem. So if you missed Galactic Moments of Mayhem, you have an option to get the Gengon Saga bundle with the two covers and the Galactic Runners of Mayhem trade paperback that has the cover art done by the TMNT NECA artist. So those are the options we have now. I kept it simple. I know you can go crazy. I'm like, man, here's the book. This is what you got. And if you have digital options, then if you want physical copy options, you have that. But, um, yeah, I, I haven't went too crazy with um, getting your character featured in the book, only because this one was already done yet. And I don't know if I'm going to keep this going as its own thing. Uh, but I'm happy in that the way it ends, it's a perfect micro series. It's like a perfect standoff, standalone book just in itself. It's awesome. But again, I already have where you can just do different episodes. It's almost like a Saturday morning cartoon, right? Like you just have like different crap going on that uncovers different stuff in the universe. Um, so yeah. Gilly, Gilly, why don't you why don't you go through these actual pledges themselves? So at the $15 pledge, what do we get? That's a uh, digital copy, a high res PDF of uh, the Gangon book. Okay, and it's got this cover here. That's yeah, yeah, digital. That's yeah, that's okay. the, the main cover. And at twenty dollars, at twenty dollars, you get a physical copy of the Gangon Saga, over thirty pages, and black and white, and it's just it's going to look great in your hands. It's going to be that. It's just going to make you get those good feelings. At least for me, it will. So, uh, yeah, twenty dollars gets you that, and then you have the thirty-five dollar bundle gets you two covers. So you have the the main cover, which is done by on the left. That's done by the main artist on this saga. It's um, David Batista, and then on the right we have a guest artist. He's a ghost artist, A.K. Addison. He did an amazing cover. Uh, yeah, where you see like the villain they face in that issue. It's a wildebeest. So um, yeah, those two covers. You get those two copies, and then uh, I don't think maybe at sixty bucks. I think I put it uh, is where you get the. Um, yeah, under that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep on scrolling down. Yeah, that's a digital where you get Gangon and the Volume 1 trade paperback digitally. So you're going to have over 135 pages of Grom work. Those are going to be PDFs. But the idea is uh, below that, you'll have um, a bundle which comes with the two covers. Yeah, all those are physical copies. That's 60 bucks. So you have two Gangon books, right? Two different covers. And then you have a 110 page trade paperback of Galactic Witness of Mayhem. With this exclusive cover, which is done by the NECA artist uh, Aaron Hazuri, who's done some cool TMNT box art for the NECA Tune line, um, and that's yeah, that's pretty much it. I think yeah, that's awesome. So so this this uh, this particular this, these particular covers were done by the NECA artist who did the Tune line stuff. Yeah, the one all the way to the right, the one all the way to the right. Yeah. He yeah, Aaron Hazuri. He did the box art to the NECA Tune line. I got him to do the cover where you see all you know all the characters on there from grom so i thought that was cool so he 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 did this stuff there yeah he <laughs> did the neck of box art yep oh, oh, that's yeah. freaking crazy man yeah like, honestly I, I thought this was a still from the cartoon to be honest with you i thought that this was actually one of those videotape uh covers right I so love, i love the cover it's a small it's a small yeah, community it right it's it's mm -hmm. a really small community and you can hire certain individuals like you know who have done amazing mm -hmm. work you know in the past and it's it's actually it's actually really it's really great, um, which is which is awesome. So so Gilly, what what uh, what can people expect, and how how can people actually support the support this project? Yeah, guys, just if you check out uh, the Kickstarter, the link that Jay has there, uh, the Gang on Saga on Kickstarter, you'll get the pre, you get the spin back story, and you'll get if you guys want, you'll get uh, the volume one. Of the Galactic Awareness of Mayhem, and that's where the Capybaras find themselves on the interstellar with an interstellar bounty placed on their heads. They don't know from who, from where, but it stems to a, the the dark past featuring Gangon. So it's it's an amazing. It, the comic is very high octane. Um, it moves at a really fast pace, uh, and the art is insane. And the story, it's. It's deep. I want to say it's deep. Uh, I, I took a big risk in that story. I don't want to spoil it, but sometimes as a writer and then Steve, and Vaughn, you guys can relate with, sometimes you write something and it hits you a certain way. And again, you're talking about playing with characters. Don't get too attached to these characters. I made the mistake of getting attached to one of these characters. 
Um, and yeah, I made a decision there that I thought needed to be done. So <laughs> it, it hits hard. This comic hits hard, uh, but it's a good thing. It's, it's fun. So guys, if you check it out on Kickstarter, you could support. Great. If you could share it out, great. If you don't care about comics and all you care about is toys, tell me if you look at the artwork here that none of them make good action figures. You cannot make that case against me. I dare you to make that case against me. I got some crazy art. I got sniper vipers in that book, okay? No one came out with sniper vipers, okay? <laughs> it, it, it has everything you need to be a toy line, to be a video game, to be a franchise, except the audience, and that's what I'm working on. But the art is there. The heart is there. The passion is there. Um, and guys, for checking out Mega J, for checking us out, thank you for staying this long. Thank you for hearing us out. And thank you for supporting the Indie Works if you do, or if not, share it out. That is more than enough. Wow, that's that, that's amazing. Thank you, thank you, Gilly. Thank you, uh, everybody here. Of course, as Gilly's mentioned, for uh, for checking these out. I mean, they, these these are amazing projects. Um, I have the links for both projects in the description below, so please uh, check these both out. Uh, give them a like and a follow, and of course, uh, give them some support on the uh, on these particular projects because they do need your support right now. Um, yeah, so guys, this has been this has been an amazing uh, afternoon. I'm uh, going to keep talking a little bit about some additional toy projects that, are, that, that have come across my desk. Again, everyone's welcome to stay and, and, and you know, like bash these things to hell. So we're going to we're going to have some fun along along these. I'm just joking. But, yeah, we're going to have some fun uh, about the toy section now. Uh, but I did want to say thank you to, uh, to I just did want to give a shout out to everybody else who just joined us. Um, the Mass Figure Collector. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Grand 460. How's it going, brother? Yes. Happy long weekend to you, too. Gwildor! Hello, Gwildor! Welcome! Welcome to the show! <laughs> Thank you, Gwildor. I remember uh, Gwildor. <laughs> I love Gwildor, too. Uh, Ryan Lay, uh, what did you miss? You haven't missed much, brother. We're, we're talking about comics, and of course, uh, you came in around the 605 mark, so you've learned you've learned a lot about uh, some, of the, some of these great creators who are on the screen right now. Robert's Infinite Realms, what's going on, my friend? How are you doing tonight? The right hand of Skeletor! Good to see you, Skeletor. <laughs> How you, right hand of Skeletor. I uh, don't know what he does with his right hand, but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna move past that. Wookie Sasquatch, thank you for that wonderful question. It was amazing. Ostradamus Toys, good to see you, Oz. How you doing, brother? Paul Morales, good to see you, my friend. Robo Geek, nineteen seventy three. What's going on, my friend? Dave Sinelli, uh, didn't miss too much. Uh, starting to feel like Rodney Dangerfield at the end of Easy Money. No respect, no respect at all. Uh, <laughs> Michael Clark, what's going on, brother? Uh, looks neat, but not really my bag. That's okay. There, you know, you can check out Atrium. You can check out Galactic Rodents Mayhem. There's got to be something you're interested in, Michael. Um, let's see here. Uh, great theme. Yeah, <laughs> it was an amazing theme. I Thank you. <laughs> that was so <laughs> Wookie Sasquatch. Wow, that's catchy. <laughs> it really was. Uh, yeah, and if you guys want to catch it again, I did put the link in the description. You guys can take a look at this particular link for uh, the Galactic Rodents of Mayhem intro song. Uh, they said, uh, Capybara's favorite food is green anacondas. Get out of town. That's why they got the sniper vipers right here. The main <laughs> one of the main adversaries. You know, we had to feature some some snakes in there. <laughs> oh my god, you're kidding me, man. That's that's a very funny, Dave. That's hilarious. Uh, Master Versal Toy Hunter, good to see you, uh, Eldor. How are you doing tonight? And Wookie Sasquatch, uh, watching these guys and getting inspired. Yes, thank you, Wookie Sasquatch. It is very inspiring watching uh, these wonderful creators do their thing. And uh, thank you guys again for joining us today. It's been it's it's been inspired. It has been inspiring. It really has. So, guys, uh, on the toy front for independent for uh, not so not so much independent this time around though. We did have an independent uh, toy company, Spiro Toys, last night. But I did want to check up on a few other uh, projects which are uh, timing out, if you will, for their for their own uh, crowdsourced uh, projects. And of course. Uh, I, I always bring up this question uh, multiple times over. Uh, is this something that they should even be involved with? But let's have a look at these and see, and, and you know, I'll talk about these just uh, since we have, uh, you know, everybody here right now. Let's so, just James, unfortunately, yeah. I got to run, but thank no you again for taking the time today and having us on. All right. Of course. All right. So, uh, so, so, uh, Ron, one more time. Uh, how can people reach you? And uh, if they if they need some services for graphic design or, or web work, uh, so you can always find me at. Um, Vaughn at Massive Web Design or MassiveWebDesign.ca for any graphics and web design. Or if you want to go to Comics Asylum, Comics Asylum on Instagram and also ComicsAsylum.com will have the uh, the Kickstarter as well too. So you can always find me there. One of oh, one of us at least, right? So you can always reach out there. But thanks again for having me having me on. 
and supporting us. All right. Absolutely, brother. So, so guys, so, so 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 guys, definitely check out Massive uh, Web Design. Their 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 website is being updated as they speak because, of course, they did move. Congratulations again, Vaughn, for the for for the move and, of course, uh, your big I guess reboot. You know, your yeah, your, your launch. Right, yeah. I think that that's going to be a great. So, guys, uh, huge thanks to Vaughn uh, Joseph for coming on. Of course, check out Massive Web Design and, of course, Massive Publishing. Thank you, thank you so much, Vaughn. We'll we'll, we'll catch right, you. Thanks, man. All yeah. the best, brother. Take it easy, brother. Take, Take care. care. Later, Vaughn. All right. So Vaughn is, of course, uh, um, he's got he's got family, man. We all got family. Right? <laughs> I'm surprised Steve's still sticking around. Like we, we all, we all, it's all about family. We all got family, brother. We all got family. Uh, Steve, if you can, if you're you're welcome to stick around, I can give you I can give you another ten minutes or so, and then uh, go right. I want to check out some of these toys. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, once, I'm with Steve here. Let's let's, let's do this, time. everybody. I'm, this I'm this this is where this is where we get to criticize uh, bigger companies for doing something that we're doing right now. All right, so guys, remember check out massivewebdesign.ca uh, if you're looking for new web design. Of course, that, that, that anybody, any of our uh, U.S. Uh, viewers, the Canadian dollar is really good for you guys. It's actually really, <laughs> really low. So if you if you guys are looking for a quote from Massive Web Design, you actually might get a really good deal. Uh, not not quote not don't quote me on that. I'm just saying that the Canadian dollar is advantageous for Americans. So. Think about it. Just think about it. Uh, of course, they do offer graphic design as well. So definitely give them give them a like and a follow. Tell them that Jay sent you. Uh, all right, guys. So uh, a couple of things: Kickstarter and crowdsource projects. Uh, also, guys, if you want to follow Comics Asylum uh, on Instagram, I forgot. Uh, you guys can definitely check them out. Uh, they're they're talking all about the new Atrium comic book. You guys should definitely give them a like and a follow as well. Uh, so, guys, some really crazy developments are happening in the crowdsource world first thing i wanted to talk about today is the freaking ghost who steve it's been a while for the star wars for you but are you planning on backing the ghost at all or did you even know that this was this was a thing like let me didn't let, know let, it was let, a thing. did not Maybe. even know this was a thing yeah. um it's, it's been a while since you've been collecting uh, you know on, on the regular uh what are your thoughts about um billion dollar companies getting in on the kickstarter model like what what like do you have any initial thoughts or anything you you want to you want to talk about it's interesting because like even even in comics um you know image like top cow and yep. uh there are several publishers that are doing the same thing it's it you know i guess it's a free world anyone can can take part in it so it's great um but i do find it interesting because then it just kind of takes away one avenue that independents have that was theirs um, as a ways to kind of get themselves out there. So you're in a way you're always going to be competing with, with, uh, whoever the giants are in whatever industry you're, you're trying to be in. 100%. As a matter of fact, um, a, uh, you know, the, one of the more famous, uh, uh, um, examples of that is, is, is berserker. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. holy crap. Um, this rate, of, this raised a record number, uh, $1,447,200. You're to compete with John Wick, man. $212 <laughs> to, bring this, to bring this to life from Boom Studios, a, a fully established. This was really, the, the, this, this brings to question a lot of things. This is a fully, fully fledged, um, you know, comic book studio. And they have connections with multiple different movie properties. They, they do a lot of different work. What you know, uh, Gilly? What are your yeah. thoughts? Because you know, Steve is he, Steve's obviously mentioned about this. I'm going to ask Steve anyway. But what are your thoughts about them raising 1.4 million dollars, nearly reaching 1.5 million dollars to to publish a book? I mean, you're looking for you're looking for three thousand. You know, both of you guys are probably looking for two twenty five hundred bucks. These guys raised 1.5 million dollars practically. You know, just just shy of it. You know, Gilly, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Like, that's just that's just absolutely nuts. It's nuts. I mean, like you said, it's hard to compete with that. At the same time, I mean, I I can't hate that, right? I'm a creator myself, but they they what they did. I think they created this Kickstarter edition, so it's not like that's the only way you can get it. There is a direct market version of this book, so they made like this cool Kickstarter uh, exclusive. Look at that, Keanu Reeves is a co-writer. Matt Kent, you got top people on this. That's what you do. You're in a position where you're that company and you're going to create a new property. That's the way to do it. I can't hate on it. I mean, I would love to be working in that position, you know, uh, but it's it also hurts a little bit because, again, I'm competing against that. If, if you're looking at the ocean, right, Boom Studios has this big yacht 
And Keanu Reeves is there with his megaphone saying, guys, come check out Berserker. And me and Steve are in our little paddle boats. And we got a little car, you know, a little uh, cardboard roll up. Guys, check out Atrium. Check out Grom. It's, you can't do anything. This is the monster. But I appreciate that they are getting comic books out there to people. Maybe there's someone who haven't read comics in a while and sees this and sees Keanu Reeves on it. And that's just going to get them back into comics. So, again, it's... <laughs> You want to keep the space for independence, but I I gotta appreciate that. I can't I can't hate on that. No, anything that brings more eyeballs to comic books to the medium is great. Um, sure, absolutely. You know, so I, I I'm like you. I I can't be a hater. I, I'm actually impressed with it uh, because when you look at some of the the numbers that are coming out of stores, right, and some of the sales figures per month. Yeah. these numbers aren't necessarily where are coming from mainstream comics, right? Mm -hmm. Like manga might have it. Um, Scholastic might have some of these numbers, but to have a comic book do this is fantastic. And and, uh, lo and look at the amount of backers, right? 14,000 yes. was able to generate almost 1.5 mil. Yeah. Just imagine if they had 40,000 or even some of the top Marvel books that sell, isn't it? In like the low hundred thousands. I mean, if it does like maybe good, like the, the good sellers, if there's a book that doesn't sell well, it's maybe making forty or eighty thousand. I mean, I mean, make to make that on fourteen grand. I mean, for yeah, fourteen thousand backers is insane. Yeah, so it'd be interesting yeah. to see what kind of um, what kind of interesting tiers they have. But you know, I think if if you're able to kind of um, ride the wave and not get caught in the wake, you know, the kind of interest and enthusiasm that might be behind a project like this, hopefully, then bleeds into the things that Gilly and Vaughn and I are doing, yeah. you know, they're indie, indie creators. Let, let's just, let's just, let's just oogle at some of these crazy tiers. Uh, let's, let's go from the most expensive up. So this is a, this is a pledge for two and a half thousand dollars for you to, because this is what I'm trying to tell you, uh, uh, Steve, you got to put in the 2,500, uh, you know, a, a, <laughs> appearance, you know, you got to do, you got to do that. Somebody pledged twenty four, uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Gilly, Gilly got a thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like you got to, you got to. They, they have dialogue. You got to ball that up. <laughs> this one has dialogue, so they actually have it. It's if you look at it like, um, like film, that yeah. speaking role versus just being a, an on camera extra with no dialogue, there's a huge that's difference. Right. That's right, and, and and you get you get naming credit too, right? So that's uh, yeah. that's that, that's a big thing. So twenty twenty five hundred dollars for that, Gilly. You would have you would have killed for that one too, right? <laughs> um. <laughs> At a thousand dollars, at a thousand dollars, it's a, a platinum immortal signed box set by by Keanu Reeves and the team. So a thousand dollars got you a platinum mean. immortal signed box set. Um, Five hundred dollars got you the gunmetal exclusive box set. So I think these are these are all different types of uh, of of uh, um, what's it called um, tin tin box, tin box uh, covers. Um, the Bronze Age three hundred and fifty exclusive box set. Uh, then they had the blood red exclusive box set. So yeah, they, they have some they have some interesting tiers here. Uh, well, one hundred and five dollars for the hardcore covers, and eighty five dollars for the one day deal, and it just keeps going down from there. But wow, just 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 an amazing uh, um, an, an, an amazing accomplishment by the team. Uh, one point four four seven two hundred two million dollars. Oh my god, just just absolutely absolutely crazy. And you know they're not the only comic creators who did something. I mean, for crying out loud, uh, getting getting back into the comic book uh, scene, um, Todd McFarlane uh, did just blew that out of the water. Three point four four seven three hundred ninety million dollars, three million four hundred forty seven thousand three hundred ninety million dollars uh, to bring the original Spawn action figure and comic remaster to life. Holy crap! This this is another this is another one of those. Um, yeah, and this this is the one that I keep asking. You know, should should companies like Todd McFarlane? I mean, he he's arguably uh, he's doing some amazing things in uh, in toys, but did he really need did he really need this money to uh, uh, you know to to bring his project to life? I mean, he could have done he could have done this without it. I mean, realistically, but I, I you know I, I don't know. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no. It, as you, as you said, Steve, as you said, Gilly, it's a free country, right? And and you know what. You do whatever you have to do to to get an advantage, and yeah, you know, with his name, with his property, and the IP, I think is the big deal. You know, forget about the fact that it's Todd McFarlane. I think that people love Spawn, right? I think that when you build a brand like you do as as a Todd McFarlane, 
and you are as recognized as you are. But the, but the really the property, right? The idea of Spawn and people love Spawn. I think that's actually really what captured people uh, for the Kickstarter. Um, thoughts, guys? Like uh, Steve, what are you, what are you, what are your thoughts on on? No, so we, an established I, brand. I, it's it's kind of like why Marvel and DC are publishing so much uh batman related stuff or um spider-man related stuff because they're surefire hits right and so like the days of maybe when when we were kids and um you could try something as a new property it was a little bit more um i guess manageable but now with margins as tight as they are you know everyone's going for a sure hit that's why even in hollywood there's a lot of you know part two part three part four in terms of sequels as opposed to a new um a new property or new ip and even within those sequels you're getting a lot of um recurgitated kind of ideas and scripts so like oh isn't this movie basically you know the second movie like the fifth movie is like the second movie but just you know in a different locale so i get it um you know mcdonald's is going to change the uh the recipe for the, the mcdonald's sauce you know for for the big mac so you, you keep doing what does what, what works right maybe add an extra patty but you're not necessarily gonna gonna mess around with it coke figured that out a long time ago don't mess with what works coke was punished for trying something different uh gilly what are your thoughts on, on the spawn initiative i mean i know todd mcfarland had the dc he has a dc connection um the exclusive rights to do that through his mcfarland toys i mean it's spawn I mean, as a kid in the 90s, if you grew up in the 90s, I mean, you just knew what Spawn represented. And I mean, maybe for whatever reason, he couldn't tap into whatever resources to launch a Spawn action figure. Why not go on Kickstarter? He got 23,000 backers. Initially, just supporting that, it gets made. And then there's people seeing on the back market, you know, you see on eBay, the Spawn figure who never heard of a Kickstarter, we're just seeing this glorious Spawn figure or again trying to hunt this figure down the <laughs> fear of missing out I, I i can't hate on it i i, I <laughs> it's fun it's 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 a badass move it's it's one of those moves that you got to do it it's as sad as it sounds all right it's like i don't know if it's too capitalist but it's like you you have the you have the recognition you have it there and you just take advantage of that and why not now i mean you get the, from there maybe that's what was able to to, to launch the spawn line he got whatever resources there, get prototypes, get stuff done, and just keep it going. So it, it's a power move. That's a big power move. And Kickstarter is a platform where, again, it's just – it's for the little guys, it's hard to compete because, again, you know – and, Jay, you know this. We, we, we have a, a, our flip war thing going on, right? Like that's going to be something that's going to be – this is our competition, you know? But on the, on, the, on the flip side, maybe people who come looking for the spawn stuff somehow go into a rabbit hole and could find any of these other indie projects like with Spiro toys or something. So again, I can't hate him for it because again, you're, you're showing that maybe not in a direct market, maybe, you know, the way action figure sales, again, I don't, I don't know. I know they were booming back when we were young and they got, as we grow older, the, the kid in that still keeps the hobby afloat. This just shows that, Hey, there's still a good market for action figures, even if it's just through crowdfunding. Um, and that could even open the doors to just keep it going, you know, on a, on a more mainstream level. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I'm with you guys. Um, uh, as always, it's, it's like, when you think about it, Todd is still not a billion dollar company. He's making a lot of money off of, off of McFarland toys and his own IPs. But when you talk about billion dollar companies, I mean, the go the where am I here? The, the 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 ghost no that's not it where am I going the the ghost uh you know uh this one this project is just actually going back gangbusters right now um in the last in the last twenty four hours right people are questioning whether or not Kane and Jairus was even a thing uh we're we're now at thirteen thousand ninety eight backers only about um nine hundred backers away from unlocking the 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 second tier the third tier sorry sorry no the second the second stretch goal. And they still have three days and four hours to go. Now, this this is what we were talking about earlier, that um, there's a plateau stage in Kickstarters, right? So, you know what? Going over to our good friends over at Geek Dad Life, um, they actually have uh, Brian Brink's HasLab charts. And thanks to Brian Brink, who's who's doing some amazing work here, we can actually take a look at some numbers. Um, 
That's and really cool. just get, tr try to get a gauge on, on, on how this works. So as we can see here, current bank account is 13095 It's literally being updated as we speak. And you can see right here that the ghost projection, right? Um, that this blue. Right. Sorry, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you can see right here, um, the blue line, I believe, is the yeah. This is this is this is the um, sorry. The red red line. The red line is the ghost. So there there it is. There's there's the red line, and you can see that there was a huge spike right right at the beginning. Like it 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 pretty much uh, went up like a rocket. Then it it got funded. Pretty much around the, around the third or fourth day, uh, as you can see here, these are the five, five day mark, right? And then literally it plateaued, right? So it it flatlined right after about the sixth day, and it just continued to micro micro uh, pledges here, micro pledges here. Had a bit of a jump on the twenty, 20 on the twentieth day, then again micro micro pledges, probably because they made an announcement that day, right? They probably made an announcement saying something, and then it just kept going, 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 and now we're at the forty five day mark. Right, and we know that the, the ghost deadline is September sixth, and we know these last four days, right? Just by history, just looking at all these other charts, that things just spike like crazy. You know, this is the actual razor crest, and you can actually see by history it flatlined and then just basically boom, 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 boom. Right? It just went, it went gangbusters. And even this one here, which one is this? This is um, what is this one? This one is this is the sail barge. And as you can see, the sail barge went through a rough ride. Like it went, it, it plateaued, and then right closer to the end, it really spiked up and, and finally got its backing. So, yeah, this one, this 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 one is is pretty crazy. So, Steve, let me ask you: four hundred and ninety nine U.S. dollars, uh, which is around, I guess, close to six hundred dollars Canadian, five hundred dollars U.S., six hundred maybe six hundred fifty dollars Canadian. Would you even consider in your wildest dreams of actually uh, backing this project, Steve? Like, what are your thoughts? Maybe if it was like a Millennium Falcon um, or a, or an X-Wing, only because I don't have a like a deep connection to this ship. Yep. Right. Um, yep. As a man of my age, um, <laughs> and so like my like I still have my my original my OG. Uh, millennium and and so if if it was something like that or it was a it was a vehicle that i was totally attached to as a kid the nostalgia would kick in and then i could see myself doing it um Absolutely. but for me to drop that on something because i'm and also i'm not like a toy collector and i'm not in there speculating or anything like that it it doesn't it's not going to appeal to me but i can definitely see at a price like that considering you know um hot toys and sideshow collectibles have their own kind of um, maquettes and stuff like that that people pay that kind of price for and higher. So it depends on on who you're marketing it to, and who your audience is. Yeah, you have to. You definitely have to be a Rebels fan, or and this is the, I think I think they're really going for the um, Ahsoka Tano because that's actually the way it's being um, mm -hmm. uh, positioned as an Ahsoka Tano. The problem is that by the time by the time it actually funds. Uh, sorry, by the time it actually ends, we probably not won't, won't we probably won't even see the ghost in Ahsoka. I think we've seen Phantom Two, but we have not seen the ghost yet. So that's that's an interesting um, little dynamic that's going on there. Gilly, uh, what are your thoughts about this? Have you decided to back this thing, or are you completely staying away? Uh, again, if I had that money to just throw around, and God bless you guys who got that disposable income, and you want to jump in on this, hats off to you. For me, five hundred dollars on that ship. I, is there a scale comparison to the figure? Is this one six scale? I mean, I don't know. Oh, how this is no. This is. is one twelfth. This is one twelfth scale. 1 so they scale. are three, three and three quarter figures. They're the original oh, vintage one. Yeah. Got you. Got you. That's a little steep. <laughs> that's that's a little steep. And like Steve said, if it's not something you're you're feeling, but again, looking at the pictures, it's cool. Yeah. What's well, not cool. a lot? It, it's it's. I'm just saying, if you got it. Go for it. I, I'm on. The, I I just can't. I look at that as as I could put that money into a, a comic, right? Into my own comic, paying an artist off a couple pages. That's how I look at. I break it down differently. But if this was a franchise that was dear to my heart, and I had that money to throw it around, and I had my man cave with this setup here, this setup there, I'm like, this was a nice complimentary piece to the OG Millennium Falcon. I I'd probably go for it. So this is this one isn't for me, but again, I'm glad that it funded, and I'm glad they're unlocking stuff. I just wish they had more of the crew unlocked. I don't know was Zeb unlocked or 
I just saw in the picture so, that he was there. They yeah. have some of the Rebels crew. So it, it's kind of cool. I, so, I, I see the merit there. Yeah, so, so on that, um, they recently unlocked uh, Ezra Bridger. So Ezra was locked, unlocked at 11,000 backers, right? And this, this is the concern right now because we're on the last four days. Uh, to unlock uh, Kanan Jarrus, we're at 13,103. It literally just jumped as we were talking. Uh, I don't know if you guys realize that, but it, it jumped as we were talking. So um, to, and to unlock Kanan, we need to get to 14,000. So we are just shy of 900 backers left to go. We're actually at, at 800, 800 and, 897 backers. Eight, yeah, I think I'm right. 897 backers? Yeah, 897 backers uh, to, 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 to unlock Kanan Jarrus. And then we need to get to uh, 17,000 backers to complete... Uh, the full, um, uh, well, not the full uh, ghost uh, crew. We're actually missing so two Zeb's more. Zeb's not in there? He's Zeb, he, not yet. 17. Not yet. And not they're yet. at 13,000. So they're at 13,000. 4,000 more backers yeah. in three days? In three days. But come on, Gilly. We've seen it, right? We, we have okay, seen I, it. I mean, I, oh, it looks good. I'm just saying. I'm, if, you, if you're a big Rebels fan, I would, I mean, and you got the money, I would, I would, 500 is a lot. Maybe three, I mean, is two fifty a lot? I don't know. I'm like five hundred <laughs> is a lot though, and it's a small scale. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. Oh, well, you, you say it's a small. That... Okay, okay. You say it's a small scale, okay? But it's 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 no, but massive. like it's right. So how big an inch? Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, what's the size? Actually, is it like okay? Here, here, four here, feet, here. five. Like uh, here, here, here. We'll we'll we'll, uh, yeah. we'll 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 show you what the what the dimensions are. Yeah, here are the dimensions. It is. 21 inches wide by 34 inches long by 13 inches high. So it is a big boy. Like this yeah. thing is huge. And I see a lot of it. There's a lot of interior with the rooms and stuff. Is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, right? you can open her up. You can right? open, so, okay, yeah. okay. I'm getting a little excited because this is a toy geek in me coming out. So <laughs> I could see how you do that. Like that's kind of cool. Yeah, man. That's kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. If I, if I had money for it, I would jump on this. I yeah. mean, 500, so, it's kind of high, but I'm seeing a lot of it. It's intricate. It's it's, oh, it's dude, a little it's, complex, man. That's it's that's, it's it's more yeah. intricate than the okay. So so Steve has the OG um, uh, Millennium Falcon. Mm -hmm. The Millennium Falcon they did for for Galaxy's Edge was even more complex uh, and way more detailed, right? At the time, and that was three hundred. That was three hundred dollars US, right? For the for the Millennium Falcon. This one, although it doesn't have any licensed sound, which the which the um, which the Millennium Falcon did the 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 um, Galaxy's Edge Millennium Falcon did have lights and sound, the detail and, and the craftsmanship and you know uh, and you know being able to come in here do all this kind of crazy stuff um, and of course if we if they reach the full tier set of um, will they include any kind of like light and sound? No, they won't. No. It's not lights and sound are not included. Uh, that's that they 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 made that statement very early on. I did a whole video on that, uh, but yeah, seventeen thousand backers to reach Garzeb Zeb Aurelios. I love the card on that too. I, I'm, I hope it makes it. He's, yeah, me too. There, there's, there's the thing though. I, would you want to take them off these cards though? That's what really kind no, of. No, they should have two, right? Shouldn't they? I mean, I'm just saying. Shouldn't they? If you're charging 500, maybe some kind of where you, like you said, these are going to be really sought after, um, because they're really collectible because they're only available through here. They should have two, right? The one you just, one maybe that comes in a plastic baggie. <laughs> and the one when it comes in the card, right? So you got one to play around with and one to put on the wall or just to Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah, because these are only gonna go up in price, right? If you don't open them if you don't open up, these are only gonna go up in price. Absolutely. The way the way I would play this, the way I would play this is they they have already announced the Ahsoka crew, right, for the ghost. Okay, so they're we're talking about that. So I would keep these guys on card because you know they're gonna they're, these ones are never gonna be released again. "Quote unquote," and um, they're going to release the Ahsoka Ghost Crew anyway. So you open up those ones because you can buy two, two or three sets of those, right? And you put them in the Ghost. The other ones you just hang on your wall, wait until they get yeah. you know two hundred dollars each or whatever, right? And then that's how I would that's how I would te technically play that it's myself. Strategy, right? It's it's an interesting one, right? Like, again, there are options. There are options to actually go for that. Um. So yeah, uh, Jay, I hate to um cut and run. No worries. But, no worries. Uh, my time's up. But uh, Gilly, I had a great time meeting you. And Steve, Jay, pleasure. Thank you very much. This Always was awesome. Better. Anytime. Uh, when do, do, like when when the when the campaign's coming around to uh, to another uh, like you know closer to the final few days, Steve, hit me up. Uh, you know, bring, bring 
get Greg in here for crying out loud. You know, get him. I will. I will. Okay. You know, he's, a, he's a busy man. So, you know, I'll, we'll he make is. sure we get and, some time. I will, it's all love. It's all love. I'm just, Absolutely. you know, I'm ribbing, I'm ribbing him. You know, we miss him. Uh, but uh, and I, I hung up with him at Fan Expo, so it's all good. You know what I mean? But get him on get him on the stream let's let's talk in the last few days let's let's sure. let's, uh, let's do a countdown we'll do something fun you know oh, yeah. I mean? and maybe we'll give away a couple of uh of atrium uh um issues. that's definitely that's definitely uh something we can talk about um yep. there's some you know some things that we've got cooking for uh the second campaign so maybe we'll push them to the cook the uh the countdown for this one sure and it sounds like a lot of fun uh but but steve let, uh, you know how can people reach you what are you working on and uh uh if uh, is there any like can people check out your instagram page? yeah so you can find me at steve bino art on instagram um my company's uh www.bobocreative.com and you can catch me on uh comics asylum uh, .com. um so i i basically post my art on uh, and any atrium related stuff on instagram and uh you know i have some some comic books in the works uh and you know, just hard at work, work making sure that Atrium, you know, issues three, four, and five are in the can. That's so we can get those up and ready for you uh, next year. Thanks, Steve. Really appreciate it. You have a great rest of the. Uh, you too. The Enjoy the what's left of the long weekend, uh, to both of you, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. All right. Thank you, Steve. Steve. Nice meeting. All right. Thanks. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Bye. Mega Jay, I think I'm gonna use that point also. The family came back. I don't know if you hear the cooing in the background. Uh <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear it. All right. You know what? On that note, let's just wrap this up. Um, so definitely, guys, the uh the ghost. Uh you only have a few more days left to go. Uh and Super Seven, the Thundercats Cat Lair. This one needs a lot of help. Uh, oh, but we have 14 days left. So it's already backed. But if you want to get the tier one, uh, which is the um okay, the uh, uh the chemistry set with another fucking uh, claw shield and another freaking sort of oh. moment, um, right? You need to hit four thousand backers, and if you want the the, the astral form of Rhino, we need to have five thousand backers. So, good, yeah, I know. So, yeah. uh, Gilly, I don't know, yeah, three thousand what? Uh, three thousand three hundred nine, three thousand three hundred nine backers. So we're st we can, we can make it. Um, Fourteen, 14 days, left to days left to go. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Fun. We we got tons we of got time. time, and at least for that you're... second form Lionel. Holy crap! I know that's sweet. crazy. Are you able to go on you know this Gilead? It's pretty much a pipe dream, right? Like <laughs> that's when the Galactic Warriors of Mayhem franchise gets signed to a big movie studio. I'm gonna have to go on the was it the the aftermarket on eBay yeah. or something, pay triple the price, but I will gladly do oh, yeah. that. Yeah. So I was this, yeah, this is a, this is a grail. This thing, is a grail, man. everybody. This is the yeah. one that that you need to have. Oh, this is the one you need to have. Gilly, my friend, thank you so much for being here tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Gilly, what are you working on? Obviously, we've we've covered the Galactic World Hunts of Mayhem. Um, and but my brother, how how can people reach you and what, what are you working on right now? All right. Uh, Mega J again, thanks for having me. Uh, Galactic World Hunts of Mayhem, I'm working on. Uh, the Gangon Saga, I will have another spinoff duo, the Cyber Ninja. So I got stuff cooking, and I do have a top secret superhero comic book that's in the works, and I also have a sword and sorcery book in the works. If you like He-Man, if you like Conan the Barbarian, I have something working with the same artist that did Galactic Rodents of Mayhem, Sebastian Navas. We will have something on that. You could reach me at gillywrightscomics.com. Uh, you could also find out any of my latest campaigns on gillywrightscomics.com. You could also find me on Instagram at gilly underscore rights underscore comics so again thank you so much mega j for having me and hopefully one day we can see the grom as action figures <laughs> maybe that could be a 10 year within 10 year a little bucket list thing but again guys thank you so much for checking out these cool toys checking out these comics spread the word if you can if you can support cool but again we appreciate you guys and mega j thank you so much again for allowing me to speak about my cool comic Absolutely. Good to see you, Gilly. Again, uh, guys, check out the links are in the description below for both Atrium and uh, Gong Gong Saga. Definitely uh, Gang Gong Saga. Sorry about that. And uh, guys, definitely check those out. Definitely support right these uh, independent creators. They do need your help. And of course, uh, thank you so much, Gilly. And uh, uh, best of luck to you. Uh, definitely, brother. Uh, take care of the family. Every we'll we all do. need to do, you know, take Enjoy care of the rest of that you. Labor Day weekend. You too, Mega J. Absolutely, brother. So we'll see you soon, Gilly. Thanks a lot. All right. Later. Later. Take it easy.
Guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Please check out all of those wonderful um, projects. Those guys need as much help as they can. Guys, I hope you're all doing well, staying safe. And as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Good journey. Geek proud.